Chapter 61 Striking Back Translator Born to be 200 million, a blood condensation expert was the first to shout out a bid. He hadn't gained anything today as a result of the bidding being so fierce. Due to the prices steadily climbing, the final prices had already exceeded their market value. Thus, he hadn't spent anything, which was currently his greatest advantage now. 300 million. An aged voice came from a white-haired old man in the corner. That old man had never made a bid the whole time. But as soon as he spoke, everyone immediately recognized him. Isn't that the Tuaji Empire's Grand Master Alchemist, Wang Luoyang? Although the Tuaji Empire wasn't as large as the Phoenix Cry Empire and didn't have an alchemist guild, it had its own alchemy hall. If a nation didn't have the support of medicinal pills or martial weapons, it would eventually be destroyed. And martial weapons came second. After all, iron was never in short supply. However, medicinal pills definitely could not be lacking. That alchemist Wang Luoyang was essentially the master of the Tuaji Empire. His status was even greater than their emperor. There was no way around that. Without the support of an alchemist, the Tuaji Empire would sooner or later be swallowed by one of the large neighbors. That was why as soon as Wang Luoyang bid, it immediately scared off many people. That was because he was equivalent to an emperor. His financial resources were incredible. The reason he had never bid before was because he hadn't seen anything that interested him. A person like him wouldn't easily take action. But once he did, it would be a sure win. An ordinary second-tier middle-grade medicinal pill normally sold for three to four hundred thousand, but now the price had multiplied by a thousand, meaning that only a few could participate. Such a treasure was one that could only be found by luck. If someone lost an arm during a battle, then their combat ability would definitely sharply drop and they would eventually be killed. But the flesh bone restoration pill was equivalent to a life-saving treasure. Xia Changfeng and Xia Beiji were incredibly regretful that they hadn't prepared more money and could only watch as this treasure was purchased by someone else. 400 million. Marquis Ying's distinctive voice rang out. No one had expected that he would also participate. 500 million. Wang Luoyang didn't hesitate at all and immediately bid higher. That was his confidence. Although Marquis Ying was a noble, his financial resources were not as profound as Wang Luoyang who controlled an empire. The entire crowd was stunned to find that an insignificant middle-grade second-tier medicinal pill was actually being sold at the same price as an Earth-class battle skill. Even Long Chen felt his heart jumping wildly. It appeared this world had lost many pill formulas. Those ancient pill formulas in his pill god memories were equivalent to an endless treasure trove. But he also felt a bit of worry. Just a flesh bone restoration pill could cause this much of an uproar. If others were to learn that this medicinal pill had come from him. That would definitely be dangerous. Perhaps he had been too reckless this time. But since it was already like this, regret was useless. Now he could only hope that the Huaian Pavilion's reputation would protect this secret. The entire crowd had turned silent after Wang Luoyang's bid of 500 million. Even Marquis Ying had become silent. 500 million was a price even he couldn't bear to waste. Now that the auction had reached this point, there was no need for Yao Nikian to fan the flames of people's passions. That would only cause people to feel disgusted. Seeing that no one else was bidding, Yao Nikian started to count down. In the end, Wang Luoyang's high bid won the middle grade second tier flesh bone restoration pill. Everyone, don't be in a hurry to leave. The show has yet to end. Seeing that everyone was already preparing to get up, Yao Nikian smiled and received a jade case from another maid. Everyone's expressions became a bit strange. The auction this year truly was full of interesting surprises. What was this next treasure that was even more precious than that pill? Opening the jade case, Yao Nikian revealed a medicinal pill that stunned everyone. That was clearly the exact same pill as the flesh bone restoration pill from before. Didn't they say that it was one of a kind? Were they purposely playing with them? When Wang Luoyang saw that pill, he immediately stood up. Everyone was expecting him to fly into a rage. But what no one expected was that he only foolishly looked at it for a moment before laughing. Haha, <laughs> good. This time I didn't come for nothing. Yao Nikian smiled and admiringly said. Truly worthy of being an alchemist grandmaster. You can tell from that far away. Yes, this is also a flesh bone restoration pill. However, this one is not middle grade. Instead, it is high grade. What? Yes, this is a high grade ancient pill. The middle grade pill was only useful in the blood condensation realm and below. But this precious high grade pill is effective even for tendon transformation experts. Yao Nikian explained solemnly. A storm erupted in the crowd. Tendon transformation experts? 
that was the peak of the Phoenix Cry Empire. High grade flesh bone restoration pill. Starting bid 200 million. 400 million. The first person to shout was actually Wang Luoyang. Moreover, he immediately raised the bidding price, clearly not wishing to take it slowly and displaying that his determination to obtain it. Everyone sighed at how rich alchemists were. 500 million. Marquis Ying bid shortly after Wang Luoyang. Everyone anticipated seeing the competition between the two of them. Brother Chu Yang, do you think Marquis Ying can beat Wang Luoyang? Asked Xia Changfeng. This time, the medicinal pill is a must have for Marquis Ying. Even if he has to spend his entire fortune, he would still bid, sighed the crown prince. Why's that? Xia Changfeng was a bit puzzled. It didn't seem that just a medicinal pill could be so coveted. Brother Xia must not know about this. A dozen years ago, Marquis Ying fought with an opponent, and in an effort to defeat Chiring him, he ended up losing a finger. Back then, he refused to seek treatment due to his pride. He wanted to use that event to motivate him to cultivate harder. So from that point onwards, he started to train crazily, eventually breaking through and entering the Tendon Transformation Realm. But after entering the Tendon Transformation Realm, he realized that training in the Tendon Transformation Realm required you to temper your tendons to connect them to your marrow. Having lost a finger, he was missing a tendon. Thus, it had an enormous impact on his cultivation. But due to how long his finger had been severed, there was no way to fix it. He has spent several years roaming throughout empires without finding a way to heal it. The reason he let Wang Luoyang win last time was because that was just been a middle grade flesh bone restoration pill. It was only useful to blood condensation cultivators. If he had used it, the chances of it helping him recover were extremely remote. Spending 500 million on just a small chance really was a bit too much. Thus he let it go. But now this high-grade flesh bone restoration pill is practically godsend. So I can practically guarantee that he will obtain it. If that Wang Luoyang refuses to give way, he, Chu Yang coldly laughed and didn't continue. But it was extremely obvious that if Wang Luoyang refused to be tactful, it would be exceedingly difficult for him to be able to leave the Phoenix Cry Empire. Even if he was the ruler of an empire, that empire wasn't comparable to the Phoenix Cry Empire. Marquis Ying wouldn't mind killing someone for his treasures. Xia Changfeng and Xia Beiji nodded. Alchemists were all exceedingly arrogant. Perhaps the competition between the two of them would extend past this auction. Wang Luoyang's expression changed when he saw Marquis Ying bid against him so fiercely. He knew that Marquis Ying probably viewed this pill as a must-have, but getting him to give up instead was impossible. With the high-grade flesh bone restoration pill, his chances of figuring out the corresponding pill formula would skyrocket. And once he figured out the pill formula, his name would shake the heavens. Furthermore, alchemists did not lack money. Of course, that was excluding beginners who failed their refinement so much that they often bankrupted themselves. Just as Wang Luoyang was about to bid again, Marquis Ying's soft voice rang out. Grand Master Wang, this medicinal pill is of exceedingly great importance to me. Please yield to me. I can even give Grand Master several days to study it after I obtain it. Harming the relationship of our two empires for just a small medicinal pill really isn't wise. This truly dazed the crowd. Marquis Ying was using both the carrot and the stick to force Wang Luoyang to give up. It seemed this medicinal pill truly was exceptionally important to him. Yao Nikian's expression became a bit ugly though. This move was clearly disrupting the auction. But both Marquis Ying and Wang Luoyang had high statuses and were their customers. If she were to reprimand these two, not only would it not change anything, but the chances of them continuing to compete were no longer great. Furthermore, punishing the two of them would definitely have a negative effect on the Huaian Pavilion's reputation. Yao Nikian began to hate that feminine voice of Marquis Ying's. Marquis Ying must be joking. This old man wants to compete, but unfortunately, I have no more money. Wang Luoyang laughed lightly. The conclusion was a boring disappointment. Just what kind of person was Wang Luoyang? No more money? This was clearly his way of giving the face to Marquis Ying and getting out of an awkward situation. Although Yao Nikian was extremely angered, her face still maintained that perfect smile of hers. Now that the auction was nearing its end, she didn't want to cause a huge fuss. Master Marquis Ying bids 500 million. Are there any higher bids? 500 million going once. 500 million going twice. 500 million going Marquis Ying had already relaxed inside his private room. Hearing the helplessness in Yao Nikian's voice, he coldly smiled. Indulging in this kind of feeling was his favorite.
but a lazy voice caused his expression to immediately change. Even the tea in his hand spilled out. 600 million. Chapter 62 End of the Auction Translator Born to be 600 million. That voice was extremely young and lazy. Everyone turned their heads to look at the private room it had come from. When they saw it was Long Chen's private room, a strange expression appeared on several people. Back when Long Chen had been about to obtain the star-fusing grass, Marquis Ying had purposely said some things that had incited Xia Beiji to fight with him over it. Now from Long Chen's words, it appeared he was looking for some revenge. Several people were praising Long Chen inside. There were few people in the entire Phoenix Cry Empire who would dare compete with Marquis Ying. Marquis Ying's face darkened. He hadn't expected that Long Chen who had been silent for so long would suddenly take this chance to look for trouble with him. 700 million. But at this point, he couldn't cower. That medicinal pill was something he absolutely had to obtain no matter the price. Otherwise, with his status, there was no way that he would have thickened his face to plead with Wang Luoyang. This medicinal pill was just that important to him. A pleased smile appeared on Long Chen's face. Now he could take revenge on Marquis Ying for what he had done to him just before. He couldn't help but feel fresh and brighter inside. He had always been using divine sense to pay attention to Xia Changfeng's private room. Having learned from them that Marquis Ying treated this flesh bone restoration pill as a must-have. If he didn't go get some vengeance, then he wouldn't be Long Chen. Although he knew offending Marquis Ying was unwise, he didn't worry too much about that. First, he'd relieve some of his anger. He didn't believe that Marquis Ying would actually go overboard against him for such a thing. With the Alchemist Guild behind him as a support, he had the confidence to provoke Marquis Ying. 800 million. The Huaian Pavilion didn't send any warnings to him despite his high bids. Yao Nikian was actually excited inside. However, she hid her emotions extremely well. Master Long Chen bids 800 million. Are there any higher bids? If not, then this high grade flesh bone restoration pill will be handed to him announced Yao Nikian. Wait a moment. I doubt that Long Chen actually has that much money. He's just making empty bids. Marquis Ying's feminine voice now held a trace of anger. Although he had suppressed it, people could still hear the fury in his voice. Is Marquis Ying questioning our integrity? Yao Nikian's smile immediately receded and she angrily said, Young Master Long Chen is Grand Master Yun Qi's student. Everyone in the Phoenix Cry Empire knows this. Before the auction, Grand Master Yun Qi transferred all his credit to Young Master Long Chen. Does Marquis Ying still think that Young Master Long Chen is making empty bids? Yao Nikian's words were rather blunt and impolite. Obviously, Marquis Ying had truly angered her by breaking the rules. Now that she had the opportunity, she would naturally relieve some of her anger. She was a woman, and a woman knew how to hold grudges. Once you angered a woman, they would no longer be soft and gentle anymore. Everyone gasped when they learned that Grand Master Yun Qi had transferred his credit to Long Chen. That meant Long Chen had the true support of the entire Alchemist Guild. That kind of guarantee meant Long Chen could buy anything he wanted. Who dared to say he had no money? But even Long Chen was dazed. How come he hadn't known about this? But he quickly realized that Marquis Ying's actions had angered the Huaian Pavilion. They were supporting him in order to give Marquis Ying a slap in the face. Marquis Ying's expression was extremely ugly now. If what Yao Nikian had said was true, then he really wouldn't be able to compete against Long Chen in terms of financial resources. 1 billion. Marquis Ying pushed down his anger and raised the bid by a whole 200 million. A billion gold coins. Just to buy a second tier medicinal pill. That was definitely unprecedented. With Marquis Ying's financial ability, a billion gold coins were already several years worth of savings. Brother Long, how about you don't bid again? It's already quite frightening. Xiao Hao was quietly shivering. Back when Long Chen had bid, they had all been completely shocked. A simple opening of his mouth was equivalent to a hundred million gold. Even if it wasn't their money, it was still breathtaking. But Long Chen only smiled slightly. He was highly suspicious that Marquis Ying was the one who had stolen his cultivation ability. Now it was just him getting back some interest. One billion five hundred million. Immediately after Xiao Hao finished, Long Chen raised the bid. Almost scaring Xiao Hao to the point of fainting. Marquis Ying had just raised the price by 200 million all at once. But now Long Chen was even more vicious. Directly raising the price by half a billion. He was clearly using Yun Qi's money to suppress Marquis Ying. The crowd was completely silent. Even Wang Luoyang was flabbergasted. That price had long since exceeded his expectations. 
Although he only had a middle-grade flesh bone recovery pill and it was inferior to the high-grade pill, there was still a large chance of him being able to figure out the pill formula from studying it. Therefore, he had also given up at this time. Crack. The teacup in Mark Wish Ying's hand was crushed, and even the tea that splashed onto his body was completely unnoticed by him. Blue veins were pulsing on his forehead. If he didn't know that the Huaian Pavilion had a powerful backer, he would have already charged out to go kill Long Chen. Long Chen, you want to obtain this pill that badly? Mark Wish Ying asked coldly. Long Chen laughed. He could tell that Mark Wish Ying had spat these words out through clenched teeth. In other words, he was exceptionally enraged. Probably even more enraged than Long Chen had been when trying to obtain the star fusing grass. Well, actually this thing is pretty much useless to me, said Long Chen indifferently. Then, you're purposely making an enemy of me, Mark Wish Ying raged. You can't put it that way. I have several reasons for wanting to obtain this thing. Reason number one is that it's an ancient pill. Even if I have to pay a high price for it, it's still worth it. If I bring it back to my teacher, he also wouldn't scold me. In fact, he might even praise me. Reason number two is that you pissed me off just now. My temperament is a bit strange. I can take anything, but I can't take a loss like that. Reason number three is that just like you, my father is also one of the three great pillars of this Phoenix Cry Empire. He spends his days guarding the barbarian border, fighting against enemies constantly, completing heroic contributions. But my family became penniless, unable to even keep a dozen servants. But you, Marquis Ying, who is on the same level as my father, who lazes his days in the Imperial Palace, actually has this much money. So I was curious just how big the difference between us was. Just how rich is senior Marquis Ying? Just how many times more money does he have than my long family said Long Chen with a smile. The majority of the people present were members of the Phoenix Cry Empire. Although Long Chen had been laughing as he said those things, everyone could hear his resentment. So you want to fight with me till the end? Marquis Ying asked lightly as he looked down at his broken teacup, killing intent surfacing in his eyes. Not really. Maybe if you increase the price again you'll win. Or maybe if some people are able to tactfully display their own apologies, then my long family will consider it and withdraw from this competition, said Long Chen. Ha ha ha, fine. A tiger father truly has a tiger son. The younger generation truly does surpass the old one. I admit to featuring today. Allow me to shamelessly make one last bid. One billion five hundred and one million, laughed Marquis Ying. Everyone was stupefied never expecting that Long Chen would actually be able to force Marquis Ying to bow his head. Marquis Ying's admittance of defeaturing already said everything. Long Chen smiled slightly. It appeared he had already reached Marquis Ying's bottom line. His adding of a paltry one million obviously meant that if Long Chen were to make another bid, he would give up. But if he did give up, he would not hold back from taking extreme measures. Long Chen knew when to quit while he was ahead, and so he didn't increase the bid again. Today already counted as his victory. An expert on the same level as his father was pushed into defeaturing be him. Moreover, he had also managed to release some of his anger in this grand setting. But his actual strength still wasn't enough. He couldn't force Marquis Ying too far. Otherwise, if Marquis Ying was truly angered, he would make him disappear without leaving behind a single trace. Even the Alchemist Guild wouldn't be able to investigate it. And even if they did investigate at that time, he would already be dead. So there was no point. Revenge had to be taken one step at a time. Yao Nikian had returned to her smiling self. Seeing that no one else was competing, she began to count down. Finally, Marquis Ying had his wish fulfilled and obtained the flesh bone restoration pill. Confetti suddenly started to rain down and music began to play. A dozen colorful young maidens danced gracefully. Yao Nikian gave a gracious thanks to everyone for participating. This time's Huaian Pavilion's auction had finally ended. The guests slowly started to leave. Long Chen wasn't in a rush. He waited until most of the crowd had left before exiting his private room. But as soon as he walked out, he ended up running into several people. Those people were precisely Xia Changfang, Chu Yang, and Xia Beichi. Long Chen, don't think you can be arrogant just because of Yan Qi's support. The Empress Dowager has already decided to give the third princess to my brother. In the future, she will be brother's woman. So a lowly peasant like you should stop having any intentions about her, sneered Xia Beichi. Oh, aren't you that woman who was sharing a bed with your master? Now that your master has left, don't you need to go attend to him? Before Long Chen even had a chance to say anything, Xiao Hao had already retorted. 
Having muddled along with Long Chen for so long, he had become much more confident. He wouldn't be able to feel at peace without causing a bit of trouble. Xia Beiji's expression changed. Xiao Hao's words were a vicious slap in the face for her. Back on that day, Xia Beiji had gone crazy and admitted to some scandalous affairs in front of many people. However, no one dared comment on it to her face. In the end, she had actually ended up fooling herself into thinking that they hadn't heard her due to how far the crowd had been. You're asking for it. Xia Beiji had just been about to charge over when Xia Changfen pulled her back. After all, this was the Huaian Pavilion's territory, and fighting was prohibited. Long Chen, it is already set in stone that Chu Yao will be my woman. Don't have any fanciful thoughts. I am the Grand Xia's prince, while you are just a noble heir. Our statuses are far too different, said Xia Changfen indifferently. Long Chen seemed to not even hear what he said. He knew that the reason they had come over was to provoke him. He had long since heard this news, so that provocation was unable to hurt him. Long Chen suddenly saw one of the guards behind the crown prince and said, I seem to have seen you before. That guard smiled slightly. I am the crown prince's guard, so it's normal for you to have seen me. No, I think I've seen you in a very particular place. For example, near the martial arena, Long Chen looked closely at him. That guard didn't reply, merely looking back at Long Chen. Long Chen smiled slightly and said to Xia Changfeng, Your face is turning black. A great calamity is about to befall you. Try to be careful. After saying that, he brought his friends out of the Huaian Pavilion. But as soon as he left, Fuji Yui ran up to him. The boss wants to see you. Chapter 63 Huaian Sect Translator Born to be within a luxurious guest room inside the Huaian Pavilion, Long Chen was sitting with the charming Yao Nikian. He asked, You're the big boss. She laughed cutely and replied, Am I not a big enough boss for you? Along with her laugh, her chest jiggled. Long Chen had no choice but to admit she was definitely big enough. But he wasn't a man who only wanted a chest. He preferred Menki's tasteful aesthetic. Or perhaps Chu Yao's grand well-bred poise. Why did you want me to stay behind? Long Chen asked lightly. Seeing that Long Chen wasn't affected by her charm, Yao Nikian became a bit irritated. That was truly a blow. She was exceptionally confident in her seductiveness. But just as she was about to say something, another voice rang out. Nikian, don't make trouble. Another woman walked over. She was around 20 years old. She looked to be exceptionally plain. Yet she gave off a very posh feeling. HMPH. What an insensitive guy. Big sis. I'm leaving. I'll leave him to you. Yao Nikian didn't forget to give a glare to Long Chen before leaving the room. First of all. I'd like to apologize for so boldly inviting you here. This little one is Bei Ling. Greetings young master Long Chen. That woman curtsied slightly. Miss is too polite. Long Chen also chose to bow slightly. I know that young master Long Chen's time is precious. So I'll keep this short. The first reason we invited you over was to discuss the splitting of the profits. The two medicinal pills sold for a total of 2 billion 1 million gold coins. This is a sky high number. Bei Long couldn't help sighing emotionally. Although they had already had a high estimation of those two medicinal pills prices, they had never expected for it to draw such turmoil. And Long Chen himself had also caused several of the auction prices to rise greatly. It could be said that he had been a huge contributor to their success this time. This is your portion. Bei Ling handed him a crystal card. There were a billion gold coins on the card, causing Long Chen to become ecstatic. He would never have to worry about money again. Although he didn't know how the Huaian Pavilion had calculated it, he didn't really care about what was now chump change to him. Thank you. The one who should be thanking the other is us. With your addition to the auction, the auction this time had the absolute greatest profit in all of history, laughed Bei Ling. Long Chen smiled, understanding that the main reason was because of him forcing Marquis Ying to pay more. No, no, without the pavilion's support, I also wouldn't have been able to relieve that resentment. Bei Ling was a bit startled. She laughed. I think young master Long Chen has misunderstood a bit. We didn't support you. Grand master Yun Qi had told us to take care of you. Whatever you wanted to buy. No matter the price. He said he would pay for it. Grand master Yun Qi. Long Chen was extremely moved. Never imagining that grand master Yun Qi had secretly helped him. He had obviously been closely paying attention to him. This time we both benefited from helping each other. With young master Long Chen's help. Our Huaian Pavilion has truly reaped an immense harvest this time. That is why to display our thanks, I will give you a gift. A book appeared in her hand. This is a list of all the treasures in our storehouse. 
You can take one item. Long Chen was surprised, but he naturally wouldn't refuse such a good thing. Having helped the Huaian Pavilion earn so much money, it was simply right for him to be able to get a reward. Opening the book, he saw there really were quite a few good things. Although they had just completed their yearly auction, there were still countless treasures. Long Chen didn't even bother looking through the battle skills. There were no longer any Earth Class 1s left. They only had Mortal Class 1s, and he no longer needed any on that level. Armor and weapons also didn't suit him. But suddenly, his eyes brightened. Oh, hard rot grass. That was a poisonous grass. If refined into a poison, it would possess extremely acute toxicity. The poisonous extract that could be refined from the hard rot grass could be applied to arrowheads. Such an arrow would be able to kill even second rank magical beasts. I'll pick that. Long Chen pointed to the hard rot grass. When Bei Ling saw his selection, she couldn't help being a bit baffled. This hard rot grass does have high toxicity, but it isn't very valuable. Does young master want to think it over some more? A stock of hard rot grass was only worth a few hundred thousand gold coins. Bei Ling had been wanting him to select an extremely precious treasure. After all, Long Chen had helped their Huaian pavilion make a great deal of profit. This was their way of winning favor with him. But he only picked a medicinal grass that was worth a few hundred thousand gold coins. Naturally, that was awkward for her. I'm not that interested in the other things. This hard rot grass is perfect for me to study a bit. Smiled Long Chen. How about you also pick something else? Probed Bei Ling. That wouldn't be too appropriate, would it? Laughed Long Chen. It's not a problem. In the Huaian Pavilion, whatever I say counts, said Bei Ling confidently. That was perfect for Long Chen, as he had actually been wondering what other bizarre things they possessed. When he had almost completely flipped through the book's contents, his heart suddenly jumped. Night Devil Skull. Although his expression didn't change, his heart was already starting to pound. This was a true treasure. Can I pick this Night Devil Skull? Asked Long Chen. Of course. Bei Ling smiled. Although the Night Devil Skull was worth over a million gold coins, it was not worth making a fuss over. In just a short time, people brought over the hard rot grass and the Night Devil Skull. The hard rot grass was packed into a sealed footlong bottle. Although it had been tightly sealed, an extremely acrid smell still came from it. The acrid smell seemed to want to bore through their noses and set their lungs on fire. A bright smile appeared on Long Chen's face when he saw that strand of hard rot grass. It had definitely matured properly and its toxicity was extremely high. As for the Night Devil Skull, it was as tall as a human. It looked like an extremely frightening bat's head. He reached out his hand and placed the hard rot grass and Night Devil Skull into his spatial ring before then thanking Bei Ling. Many thanks. Bei Ling smiled slightly. Young Master Long Chen is too polite. As I said, the first reason we invited you here was to thank you. The other reason was to ask young master Long Chen if he wished to enter my Huaian sect. Huaian sect. Long Chen was startled. Correct. The Huaian pavilion is just one of my Huaian sect's branch industries. Laughed Bei Ling. Does that mean young lady Bei is one of the sect's branch disciples? Asked Long Chen. Bei Ling nodded. Bei Ling isn't talented and is just an outer disciple of the Huaian sect in charge of the Phoenix Cry Empire's Huaian pavilion. Long Chen was startled. So this Bei Ling was actually the branch pavilion master and an outer disciple of the Huaian sect actually. With young master's talent and his attainments with medicinal pills, young master will quickly be able to walk out of these uncivilized, backward lands. This is my third year in the Phoenix Cry Empire. Now with young master Long Chen's assistance, I finally reached my target. Now when I return to the sect, I will be promoted to become an inner disciple. Anticipation appeared in her eyes. So to repay this favor, I will shamelessly give you this invitation. If you enter my Huaian sect, you will definitely have the best conditions to grow. Long Chen couldn't help being moved and asking, What do you mean? These uncivilized lands. Haha, <laughs> young master must not know. But this world is so large it is out of your imagination. The Phoenix Cry Empire is just a drop of water in the ocean. This region is called uncivilized because it is far from the cultivation world. That was why I said that with your talent. You should go to a more expansive land to grow. Only then will you not be stifled. Smiled Bei Ling. But when it came to explaining those more expansive lands, she didn't further say anything at all. This was the first time Long Chen had heard of the outer world. Grandmaster Yan Qi had barely raised that subject with him. And even Bei Ling didn't reveal too much. Although Long Chen was curious, he didn't keep questioning her. He laughed. Many thanks for your appreciation. 
If I ever do leave Phoenix Cry and want to see the outer world, then I will go looking for you. His words were extremely tactful. He didn't agree nor decline. Bailing sighed. It looks like you don't want to leave Phoenix Cry for now, but I will be returning to the sect immediately. How about this? If you do leave Phoenix Cry and don't find a suitable sect, keep my Huaian sect in mind. Here, this is my symbol. With it, you can come to the Huaian sect to find me. Receiving a jade tablet from Beiling, Long Chen said, Then, I'll thank young miss for her help. To tell the truth, I really am interested in that vast and expansive sky that you were talking about. Unfortunately, he had too many troubles that he had to resolve, and there was no way Beiling could wait for him as this was a crucial moment for her to promote from an outer disciple to an inner disciple. Although he didn't know exactly how different the two were, he could tell that it was extremely important to her since she couldn't conceal her excitement. As soon as Long Chen left, a side door opened and Yao Nikian walked in. She was confused and said, This Long Chen actually refused sister's invitation. A refusal is normal. This Long Chen is definitely not as simple as you. He is extremely shrewd. He's definitely contemplating matters that he hasn't revealed. Sighed Bei Ling. What a shame. If you could have lured him, a pill cultivator with endless prospects, into our Huaian sect, then you might even be promoted to become a core disciple. How about I go try to charm him again? No harm right, said Yao Nikian. Just give it up. Long Chen isn't like those perverts you usually charm. You'd just be disgracing yourself. We still have to finish some preparations. Once we're all set. We'll have to return to the sect the Huaian pavilion will be left to another disciple sent here to gain experience, said Bei Ling. Although it was hard for her to accept this, Yao Nikian always trusted what Bei Ling said. She only quietly cursed inside. Was this Long Chen even a man? A Chu. Long Chen had just entered his room when he sneezed. HMPH. I don't know whether it is Marquis Ying or Xia Changfen who is cursing me. Or is it that idiot woman? One. Although he didn't know who was talking about him, that person definitely wasn't saying anything good about him. He called over Bayor and repeatedly warned her not to let anyone interrupt him before tightly closing the door. It should be time to refine the star fusing pill. Chapter 64 Visiting Chu Yao Translator Born to be Boom His pool furnace violently shook and terrifying energy surged within. It was as if his pill furnace was trying to seal a struggling magical beast. Seal Long Chen shouted and tightly pushed down the furnace lid, but a medicinal pill's essence couldn't be sealed just relying on physical strength. At the same time as his hand pushed down on the lid, his powerful spiritual strength surged out and completely locked down the pill furnace. This intense struggle continued for a full two hours before his pill furnace gradually returned to calm. Slowly opening the lid, the originally dark room immediately lit up. A pearl-like medicinal pill was emitting a gentle light. He, I finally succeeded. Long Chen relaxed and wiped away his sweat. He was incredibly exhausted and almost fainted. This was the third furnace of pills he had refined. The first furnace of pills had been to refine the star-fusing pill Chu Yao needed. Of his three refinements, the star-fusing pill had been the easiest to refine. Then, he had refined the soul-devouring heart-rotting pill, a poison pill refined from the heart-rot grass. It would be one of his protective measures in the future. The last thing he had refined just now was the hardest to refine. A soul-nourishing pill. He had refined it by using the night devil skull he had obtained from the Huaian pavilion. The night devil had a similar shape to a bat. An adult was a dozen meters long and fiercely bloodthirsty. Its most terrifying aspect was its ability to use spiritual attacks. To directly attack the spirit. That was a terrifying kind of method that was practically impossible to defend against. Long Chen had used the second rank magical beast Night Devil Skull's crystal core as the main ingredient to refine a single soul nourishing pill. Soul nourishing pills were exceptionally special medicinal pills. They had practically vanished from this era. Even in his Long Chen's pill god memories, there were only three formulas that could nourish the soul. Consuming it would benefit the spirit greatly, and at the initial stages of soul cultivation, consuming one soul nourishing pill was equivalent to having a huge head start over your competition. This was a rare medicinal pill that had absolutely no side effects. This pill was extremely precious to Long Chen in particular. As an alchemist, he definitely required a powerful spiritual strength. But the first thing that popped into his head when he looked at that pearl-like soul-nourishing pill was a vision of Menki's flawless face. Menki was a beast tamer. That was true soul cultivator. It would be a waste for anyone else to take it. But Menki was now in the Wind Spirit Pavilion. He didn't know where that was at the moment. 
so it would be impossible for him to send it to her. Sighing, he put away the soul-nourishing pill. If he still didn't see Menki again within half a year, then he would simply consume it himself. That was because this soul-nourishing pill was not like other medicinal pills. If it wasn't consumed within half a year, the spiritual energy inside the pill would begin to fade. After putting away the medicinal pills, Long Chen could no longer support himself. Exhaustion caused him to collapse onto his bed. The next time he opened his eyes, it was already noon the next day. After washing up, he chatted with his mother, ate lunch, and left, ready to meet up with Chu Feng. He had already set up a meeting with Chu Feng for today at a tea house. By the time Long Chen arrived, Chu Feng had already been waiting for a long time. Chu Feng had a middle-aged guard beside him. When he saw Long Chen approaching, that guard was just about to say something when his vision suddenly darkened and he fainted. After knocking him unconscious, Long Chen took out some face-changing liquid and applied it to his face. In just a couple of minutes, he had changed into the guard's clothes and left with Chu Feng to the Imperial Palace. Everything was going according to plan. Chu Feng had followed Long Chen's instructions to keep a guard beside him at almost all times. This was all in order to fool people for today. Now Long Chen would no longer appear as conspicuous in other people's eyes. The two of them managed to easily enter into the inner section of the Imperial Palace. This was Long Chen's first time in the Imperial Palace. The winding palace maze completely confused him. Without his powerful spiritual strength, he would have lost his direction. Brother Long, my big sis is under house arrest in her Jade Yao Palace. There are guards outside. They've never blocked me from entering. But whether or not I can bring you in is still unknown. Chu Fen was hesitant. Don't worry, let's try our luck. Just follow the contingencies in our plan. If it really isn't going to work, then I won't force it, nodded Long Chen. Long Chen had come to deliver Chu Yao the medicinal pill, but he also wanted to help her resolve those foreign spiritual seeds. There was only one star fusing pill, and refining its medicinal pill's energy required skill. With Long Chen by her side, even if something unexpected happened, he might still be able to remedy the situation. But another reason he had come was because he missed her. Ever since he had revealed his feelings for her at the Lantern Festival, her beautiful image had always been held within his heart. He wanted her to have more faith in him. He wanted her to know that no matter how hard her days were, she would always have Long Chen with her. He wanted her to share a part of her pain with him. He wanted her to never have to suffer helplessly again. That was why he had come. Finally, they arrived at Chu Yao's Jade Yao Palace. There were eight guards wearing imperial robes guarding the gate. There were also dozens of other soldiers surrounding the perimeter. That truly angered Long Chen. This was the Imperial Palace, which was equivalent to Chu Yao's home, but it was completely surrounded by guards. How was this any different to being imprisoned? Long Chen was becoming increasingly disgusted with the royal family. The Empress Dowager has ordered that outsiders cannot enter the Jade Yao Palace. As expected, Chu Feng and Long Chen were blocked from entering. Outrageous. I'm here to see my sister. Why can't I enter? Chu Feng shouted angrily. Seventh Prince. I'm sorry. You can enter. But your guard cannot. That guard was not overly servile or overbearing. He is my personal guard. He's my most trusted guard. And if you won't believe me, then I'll make your head tumble to the floor. Chu Feng shouted sternly. That guard shook his head. His voice was as indifferent as ever as he replied. I'm sorry. These are the Empress Dowager's orders. No one can change them. While Chu Feng and that guard were arguing, Long Chen had already spread out his divine sense. Sensing a figure sitting and leaning against a window. He couldn't help but feel pity. Chu Yao was as beautiful as ever. However, she had become much thinner and wan. It was obvious that this constant imprisonment over these days had made her suffer. Long Chen truly wished to punch that guard who was blocking them, but he didn't dare to. This was the Imperial Palace, and he didn't dare to be reckless here. What matter is causing this much ruckus? Suddenly, a displeased voice came from behind. Greetings, Fourth Prince. That was the Fourth Prince Chu Zaya. It seemed he had just happened to be passing by when he heard the commotion. Long Chen frowned slightly when he saw that it was the fourth prince. That was because he could see Chu Xia looking at him with a bit of surprise. Although he didn't know where he had messed up, he was now certain that Chu Xia had recognized him. What's going on? After glancing at Long Chen for a moment, Chu Xia turned to the guards, reporting to fourth prince. Seventh prince wanted to bring this guard into the Jade Yao Palace, but, impudent. You audacious slave, are you doubting my little brother? You actually think he'd harm his own sister? The fourth prince interrupted angrily all of a sudden. 
This little one doesn't dare. That guard jumped in fear. He hastily kneeled down. Obviously, the fourth prince instilled much more fear in him than the seventh prince. Let them in, ordered the fourth prince coldly. But, that guard was still hesitant. If the Empress Dowager wants to assign blame, naturally it will fall on me. Could it be that you don't even trust me? The fourth prince asked coldly. This little one doesn't dare. That guard fell back and no longer said anything. Enter then. The fourth prince patted Chu Feng on the shoulder, but he was clearly looking at Long Chen. Long Chen nodded. Although he didn't know why the fourth prince would help him, now wasn't the time to think about that. After the seventh prince and Long Chen entered the Jade Yao Palace, the fourth prince smiled and also left. Entering the Jade Yao Palace, the two of them went into the central courtyard. Chu Yao had been leaning against the window and looking down at the fish swimming in the pond when she turned slightly and suddenly saw them. When she saw Long Chen, first she was dazed for a moment before wild joy filled her. Her jade hand lightly covered her cherry lips, and her tears began to wildly fall. She had somehow managed to recognize Long Chen. Long Chen slowly walked up to her and apologized. Sorry for being so late. Chu Yao couldn't hold back any longer. With her head in Long Chen's chest, she began to truly weep, seeming to want to cry out all her grief. During this time, she had been under constant house arrest. When she heard that the Empress Dowager had already decided to marry her off to Xia Changfeng, she had almost collapsed. If Chu Feng hadn't secretly brought Long Chen's promise to her, she might have already become hopeless and left this colorless world. Every day she would watch the sunrise and bitterly wait for Long Chen. Each day had felt longer than a year to her. That kind of suffering was something only she knew about. Long Chen enjoyed her fragrance as he gently stroked her long hair, letting her give vent to her grief. At the same time, he also swore to himself that no matter the price, he would definitely protect Chu Yao, even if that price was his life. Sometimes, he would feel that Chu Yao was even more pitiful than himself. After all, Long Chen at least had a mother and father who loved him, but Chu Yao had lived her whole life in the loveless imperial palace. The imperial palace was a place where there was no trust or love. For a weak woman like her, it really was too painful. After feeling enough time had passed, Long Chen noticed that Chu Fen was just awkwardly standing in his original location, not knowing whether he should stay or leave. Cough. Long Chen lightly coughed, and Chu Yao broke out of her daze and hastily escaped from Long Chen's embrace. Her entire face was red, and she couldn't even bring herself to look at either of them. Ah, how about I go for now? Chu Feng asked probingly. No need. Just help to keep watch for me. I have some secret matters I have to do with your sister. Long Chen waved his hand. But as soon as he saw Chu Feng's shocked expression, he knew that the kid had misunderstood and hastily added. It's not what you think. He didn't explain further. Not explaining was better, as the explanation was even more explicit. Chu Yao's pretty face was completely red, and she was too embarrassed to even show her face. Long Chen straightforwardly pulled Chu Yao upstairs, leaving behind a stupefied Chu Feng who just stood there alone and in a daze. Chapter 65 Star Fusing Pills Key Translator Born to be the Jade Yao Palace was Chu Yao's personal princess palace. It was large with three floors, the third floor being her personal chambers. Long Chen had never once gone into a woman's chambers before. What surprised Long Chen was that Chu Yao's room didn't have any majestic or grand decorations. Instead, everything was very simple and plain. Isn't it strange? Chu Yao pulled Long Chen in and quietly said, I've always imagined that if only I had been born into a normal family, I would be free. I might not be able to have the luxury or a high status, but at least I would have my freedom. Long Chen smiled. That's just because of your viewpoint. To be born into poverty is to have to struggle every day. In this world, if you want to be free, then you have to have a matching power. Chu Yao nodded and led Long Chen into her room. Long Chen was startled to see that her bed was covered with drawings of himself. Those drawings weren't made by a master painter. Instead, they were remarkably lifelike. Without the embellishment of the drawings of him on the market, you drew these. Long Chen asked in surprise. Her face reddened a bit and she nodded. Ever since the Lantern Festival, drawing images of you is the only way I can pass the time. Otherwise, the days are even more unbearable. Long Chen felt a sudden burst of emotion for her. Looking at how much thinner and wan she was, he felt his heart ache. Chu Yao, wrapping his arms around her tender waist, he pulled her into a tight kiss. Chu Yao immediately felt the sky and earth spinning around her. Long Chen's masculine scent filled her nose, and it was like sparks were running throughout her body. Tightly hugging onto Long Chen's back, 
the two of them lost themselves in that intoxicating feeling. Long Chen, Yao Er wants to be your woman. Her breathing was shallow and her beautiful eyes were blurry as she looked at Long Chen. The intense feelings she had for him were enough to melt the steel. With the beauty in his arms, Long Chen felt as if his whole body was about to ignite. Even his breathing was becoming hurried. With her encouraging him, Long Chen's most primal desires ignited and his hand slowly started roving up from her waist. Long Chen, I want to be your woman. Even if I die, Yao Er will be content. Her entire body turned soft as she quietly whispered. Chu Yao's voice was soft, but to Long Chen, the words were like thunder. His originally aroused desire was immediately extinguished like icy water had been thrown over him. When Chu Yao sensed Long Chen's body suddenly stiffen, she slowly opened her eyes and saw that his expression was a bit unnatural. What's wrong? He took a deep breath and told himself to stay calm. After gently planting a kiss on her forehead, he said, Yao Er, do you not have faith in me? From her tone and what she said, Long Chen had understood her inner thoughts. She was planning on ending her life after giving herself to him. And also for some unknown reason, Long Chen had a sudden premonition that if he did go through with that, he would regret it for the rest of his life. Although such a premonition was extremely abstruse, Long Chen had always had a keen intuition ever since merging with the pill god soul. His gut had never misled him. Long Chen, Chu Yao looked at Long Chen and suddenly started sobbing into his chest. I love you, Long Chen. I would rather die than marry someone else. Long Chen gently stroked her back. As expected, his intuition had been correct. After patting her, he said, Yao Er, did you forget the promise we made to each other at the Lantern Festival? The dragon swims across the four oceans. The phoenix flies throughout the nine lands. She softly recited. But as soon as she finished, her tears truly began to fall. Seas of blood may block us, but we will never give up our path. Dragon and phoenix will both live to old age. Long Chen also heavily recited what he had said in return. That was his first promise to Chu Yao. Chu Yao's jade hands tenderly stroked Long Chen's cheeks. She was choked with emotion as she sobbed. But... Can we really live to old age? We definitely will. Believe in me. Okay. I'll trust in my future husband. Chu Yao smiled, appearing like a dew-dropped flower with her tears on her beautiful face. Yao Er, you really are beautiful, blurted out Long Chen. As long as you like how I look then I'll let you see me every day. This time Chu Yao wasn't shy anymore. Haha, <laughs> good. We'll have many more days for that. But today I came mostly to bring you this. Long Chen took out the star-fusing pill immediately causing the light in the room to turn gentle. Although it was the middle of the day, that was not able to conceal the light coming from the pill. Here, consume it. I'll protect you. Although she didn't know what it was, due to her trust in Long Chen, Chu Yao obediently swallowed that star-fusing pill. With Chu Yao sitting lotus-style on the bed, Long Chen placed his hand on the middle of her back, using his spiritual strength to keep a close eye on the state of her body. That star-fusing pill was something Long Chen had used his full effort to refine. It was the best pill he had refined up to this point, and it could already count as a peak existence amongst second-tier medicinal pills in Phoenix Cry. In just several breaths' time, the medicinal pill dissolved and spread quickly throughout her body. Don't bother with it. Let the energy flow as it wishes. The star-fusing pill spread throughout and filled every single path of Chu Yao's meridians. Some of her meridians, which hadn't been opened up yet were slowly forced open by its energy. But such a feeling was not a pleasant one. It felt as if millions of ants were crawling throughout her meridians, causing her to feel an irritating itch. Chu Yao knew that this was something Long Chen had refined for her, so she did her absolute best to hold back any pain sounds, not wanting to worry him. This kind of suffering was something Long Chen was extremely familiar with. Back when he had first absorbed heaven and earth's spiritual energy into his body to open his meridians, he had felt such an intense pain that he would never be able to forget it in this lifetime. Although Chu Yao was much better off than he had been at that time, one was pain while the other was itchiness. The degree of difficulty in bearing with it was essentially equal. It took a full two hours for the star-fusing pill's medicinal energy to completely merge into Chu Yao's meridians. Now draw the medicinal energy into your danshan. You have to pull that energy from the farthest parts first. Just like how rivers flow into the ocean. Chu Yao nodded and slowly began to circulate her spiritual key. She began to collect the medicinal energy from her meridians into her danshan. What surprised Long Chen was Chu Yao's control of her spiritual key which was extremely precise, to the point where she could control the slightest detail. Chu Yao was definitely a martial genius, 
Long Chen couldn't help but sigh emotionally. Just by using her familiarity with her spiritual key, she was already able to reach such a high level of control. If those nine foreign spiritual kiss weren't blocking her dantian and causing her spiritual key to be too chaotic and weak, the result from their fight on Sunset Mountain would probably have been reversed. Good. Now increase the speed. The faster, the better. Channel your energy, directed Long Chen quietly. With the pulling of the medicinal energy in her body, Chu Yao gradually caused the small streams of energy to become large rivers, the energy becoming greater and greater. Following Long Chen's directions, she increased her speed and now her meridians were pushed to their max, sending the energy to her dantian wildly like surging waves. Boom! Chu Yao's dantian shook and the nine foreign spiritual energy seeds locking it were immediately pushed to the breaking point by those huge waves. No, you're still lacking some energy. Long Chen's expression changed slightly. His spiritual strength rushed out, aiding Chu Yao in pulling the star-fusing pill's energy to her dantian. Those waves now became a flood. If it had been just the medicinal energy, then it would count as a flood. But then adding in Long Chen's spiritual strength, that flood became a huge torrent. Those nine foreign spiritual kiss that had been nourished by Chu Yao for so many years were immediately crushed into pieces and merged into her dantian. Boom. Following the breaking of those nine spiritual seeds, Chu Yao's dantian immediately became filled with endless energy. It caused Chu Yao who was originally at the ninth heaven stage of key condensation to immediately break through to the blood condensation realm. First heaven stage of blood condensation. Second heaven stage. Third heaven stage. Her cultivation base rapidly advanced at a shocking pace. Those nine spiritual seeds had been nourished for so many years. Now that they were crushed, the amount of energy they released was absolutely astonishing. It could also be seen just how terrifying Chu Yao's talent was. Despite not spending much time on cultivating, just the accumulated energy she had gained passively was enough to even scare Long Chen. Fifth heaven stage. Sixth heaven stage. Now Long Chen was truly stupefied. Chu Yao's talent was so great that Wang Chen would have been nothing in front of her. Seventh heaven stage. Eighth heaven stage. Long Chen's expression changed. He realized that under Chu Yao's rapid advances in her cultivation base, it seemed she was going to break out of the blood condensation realm to reach a higher level. Boom. As he predicted, Chu Yao's cultivation base advanced to the ninth heaven stage, and there was still an enormous amount of energy remaining. Crap. Long Chen shouted and immediately activated his Feng Fu star. He poured extremely pure spiritual key into Chu Yao's body and tightly sealed her dantian. He spat out a mouthful of blood. In order to avoid hurting Chu Yao, that spiritual key he had poured into her body was not capable of defending itself from that wild, out-of-control spiritual key in her body, causing him to suffer a loss. Long Chen, Chu Yao let out an alarmed cry. At this point, she had already lost control of her own cultivation base. Not a problem. Just calm yourself. I'll help you control your Danchen's energy. You absolutely can't break through again. Otherwise. Your foundation will be practically ruined. Long Chen explained while suppressing her dantian. Chu Yao hastily stabilized her state of mind. Working with Long Chen, they tried to control the energy in her dantian that seemed almost endless. Luckily, Chu Yao's control of that energy was extremely great. Knowing that this was a crucial moment, she focused completely on controlling her dantian. Two hours later, her dantian finally stabilized. Chu Yao collapsed onto her bed. The amount of mental energy she had used up just now had been too great. Long Chen wasn't much better off than her. Without his powerful spiritual strength, he would have already fainted. The feeling of having to take hits without hitting back truly was a bit irritating. He covered Chu Yao with her blanket and left a piece of paper behind that told her to properly rest and to let him handle everything else. Chu Feng had been waiting for six hours. Only now did he see an exhausted Long Chen walk down. And for a moment, he didn't know what to say. Long Chen didn't even have the strength to explain. Let's go. I'm tired. But after the two of them exited Jade Yao Palace, they hadn't walked far before they were stopped by someone. The fourth prince wishes to see you. Chapter 66 Treacherous Intentions Translator Born to be the fourth prince poured a cup of tea for Long Chen. He smiled lightly. Brother Long truly is a dragon amongst men. No matter what, such boldness truly is worth admiring. Fourth prince flatters me. But this little brother still doesn't know just how you recognized me, replied Long Chen. He really did want to know just what he had forgotten about. 
He was confident that his appearance changing technique did not have the slightest flaw. Even a wise man who thinks it over a thousand times will forget at least one thing. To be honest, I didn't actually recognize you at first. And it was only when I saw that ring on your hand that I managed to figure out something was strange. Then, adding on your gaze, I realized it was you. The fourth prince pointed to Long Chen's hand. Only then did Long Chen suddenly realize that he was wearing his spatial ring on his finger. That ring had a design that was specific to the Alchemist Guild. He had actually forgotten such a large detail. The fourth prince truly is someone observant to the smallest detail. It really is worthy of admiration. But what I really want to know is, why did you help me? Asked Long Chen. Haha, <laughs> you might not believe me even if I tell you. The truth is, I dislike Xia Changfeng intensely. No matter what, Chu Yao is still my sister. Although familial affection is a luxury that can't be afforded in the Imperial Palace, I still have some in my heart. I do not have the heart to force Chu Yao to marry someone she doesn't like. But you also know that the Imperial Palace is simply like that. All that matters is if it will benefit the Empire. No one cares about your emotions. That is simply the helpless truth of living in the Imperial Palace. I've tried to persuade the Empress Dowager many times in hopes of changing her mind, but none of it had any effect. In the end, I actually ended up infuriating her and being kicked out of her Empress Dowager Hall. From the fact that Brother Long come to visit Chu Yao today, I can tell that you have truly sincere feelings for Chu Yao, but my ability is limited, and I can only help you this much, sighed the fourth prince. Fourth prince is too polite. Long Chen will remember this matter. It seemed he would have to owe a favor to the fourth prince for today. As for the matter of your long family losing its stipend, I once tried investigating, but I was shut down before I could get to the bottom of it. So, I'm also powerless when it comes to your long family. Long Chen frowned and asked, Can fourth prince tell me what he discovered? Ah well, it was something that happened in the imperial palace, so it's extremely muddied. My brothers and I also fight and scheme against each other. I really am powerless when it comes to it. The fourth prince shook his head. Long Chen's eyes brightened ever so slightly. Although the fourth prince didn't give him a direct response, the fact that he had purposely mentioned his brothers was definitely somewhat interesting. There were a total of seven princes. Other than the fourth prince, there were six left. Of those remaining six, the seventh prince could also be excluded. Then, that left the crown, second, third, fifth, and sixth princes. Long Chen had observed each of them carefully at the Phoenix Cry Lantern Festival. Other than the crown prince, none of the others seemed to be shrewd enough. Then, the most suspicious one would have to be the crown prince. Moreover, Long Chen had recognized the assassin who had killed Li Hao as one of his henchmen. All the evidence pointed to him. Many thanks. Long Chen cupped his hands. Haha, I didn't say anything. I can't accept your thanks. Laughed the fourth prince. He then sighed. Sometimes I truly envy you noble heirs. You can be free and unconstrained, not like us who do not have freedom. I even have to suck up to people I plainly dislike. Speaking of which, Xia Changfeng is returning to the Grand Xia in 10 days to prepare for his wedding with Chu Yao. Although I truly wish to punch him in the face, I can only give him a smile. That's the sorrow of living in the Imperial Palace. He's leaving in just 10 days. Long Chen didn't bat an eye, but a cold light flashed in his eyes. The fourth prince seemed to not notice any change in Long Chen's expression. Sipping some tea, he replied, Yes, he's taking the southern pass, a shortcut to the Grand Xia. A prince's wedding naturally requires many preparations. Long Chen nodded and kept that information in mind. At the same time, an outrageous idea popped into his head. If he could pull off that plan, this matter with Chu Yao would be easily resolved. The fourth prince chatted for a bit longer with Long Chen before politely seeing him off. When he once more returned to his room, a woman appeared. That woman seemed to be in her thirties. She was tall and veiled in extravagance, giving off a cold sensation that she could not be offended. What you're doing right now is extremely dangerous, she said. The fourth prince smiled slightly and sipped some tea. Danger means risk, and risk means there's a chance of a high payout. I feel that it's worth it. If Long Chen losses, then he will just be another corpse, meaningless to us. But if he succeeds, then the plan will advance a couple of steps. Mom, don't worry about it. That woman was precisely Phoenix Cry's queen mother of the Western Palace. She shook her head and said, I hope you know what you're doing. I had a mission in being married off to here. You and I have to remember that. Novaloon.com HMPH. You were originally a princess from the Grand Zaya, but you came here to Phoenix Cry for your own goals. 
As for me, was I born to be just a chiss piece? They plan on seizing Phoenix Chryslands, making Xia Changfen the ruler of this empire. Then, he'll monopolize all the rich lands. When the time comes for credit, it'll all be theirs. As for us mother and son, are we destined to become their tools? Why? The fourth prince suddenly let out all his anger into a loud bellow. The current him was just like a beast that had been provoked. Capable of devouring anyone at any moment. Zyadur, I know you're mad inside. With your talent, you wouldn't lose out to anyone. But this is fate. Fate? Fate is dictated by man. I will control my own fate. I will not be a puppet. I will become the emperor. That's impossible. Don't worry about it. I've already made all my plans. Right. How is the Empress Dowager? Asked the fourth prince. She's under my soul assimilation art. I can basically completely control her. But as a precaution, I always add a bit more control. She replied indifferently. Okay. Good. Now we just have to wait for good news from Long Chen. I hope he doesn't disappoint me. The fourth prince smiled. Raising his cup, he drained it in a single gulp. When Long Chen returned home, he saw there were a couple of carriages by the gate. As soon as he walked past the gates, the housekeeper immediately informed him that there were guests present. Long Chen was startled, as it had been many years since someone had paid a visit to their Long family. Why were there guests now? He went straight to his mother. He could already see that she was talking with a couple of smiling guests. Seeing Long Chen come over, she hastily said, Chen Er, come, greet your two aunts. Amongst the group, two of them were old wives who were similar in age to his mother. Long Chen had no alternative but to greet them as maternal aunts. Haha, <laughs> what a good child. He's grown up in an instant. Quick, you guys, come greet your cousin. One of them hastily called out to the few people behind her. There were three men and two women all around the same age as Long Chen. One of the men awkwardly said, Cousin, it's been many years. Long Chen nodded. He still vaguely remembered this person. Back when they were little, this person had forcefully snatched his toys, causing him to cry. Although he felt that it was a bit abrupt to suddenly meet his mother's family, seeing how happy she was, Long Chen also felt it would be bad to say anything about it. So he merely forced out a few courteous sentences. As soon as that was done, Long Chen stood up and said his goodbyes. Only then did Long Chen learn from his mother that they had come to apologize to her. Chen Er, I also have a bit of grudge against them for not helping us back when we first entered a crisis. However, now they came and told me the whole story. It wasn't that they didn't want to help, but that they didn't dare to. Sighed Mrs. Long. That crisis has already passed and you've also become a high-status alchemist. Our Long family has also risen from that. Mom has also thought about it and accepted it. Let the past stay in the past. I hope you also won't hold it against them. After all, they are your mom's family. Long Chen coldly sneered inside. They hadn't dared to help? What had they been doing when the Long family had almost gotten to the point where they hadn't been able to afford food? Even if they didn't dare help obviously, secretly sending a bit of money to help was still something incredibly easy. The current Long Chen was now a towering figure that no one in the capital didn't know of. He had a close relationship with Grandmaster Yun Qi and even dared to compete with Marquis Ying at the auction. That was enough to display how domineering he was. Long Chen had used that kind of method to tell everyone that his Long family was no longer the same Long family as before. He was not someone that could be bullied by just anyone. The fact that they had only come now to apologize was clearly just them trying to curry favor. Long Chen truly held them in contempt, but since his mother had already forgiven them, he could not argue too much about it. If his mother wanted to, then she could do whatever she wanted. Living in the secular world meant you had to endure living as how society expected you to. Seeing that Long Chen didn't have that much of a bad reaction to her family, Mrs. Long also became more at ease. After all, no matter how much of a grudge she had, they were her family. And having been alone for so many years, she also thirsted for familial love. Long Chen accompanied his mother for a while. She asked him a couple of simple questions about his current situation, and he replied with a few vague sentences, even if he was just doing the same thing as he always did, telling her the good news but not the bad, it still let her feel a bit relieved. After that, Long Chen went into seclusion, having been busy all this time dealing with Chu Yao's matter, he hadn't truly had time to focus on cultivation. Right now, he had an idea to make sure Xia Changfen remained forever in the Phoenix Cry Empire but Xia Changfen always had many guards around him. He had to be absolutely sure to completely eliminate that bastard in just one attempt. 
But ever since condensing the 11th cyclone, he had become completely bewildered about how he was supposed to cultivate further. He had no idea just how to use the nine-star hegemon body art to break through to the blood condensation realm. But there was no other way for him to get stronger. He had no real danchen without the nine-star hegemon body art. So only by further training in it could he advance. Young master, someone's looking for you. Chapter 67 Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf Translator Born to be within the guest room was a woman in a long white skirt who was currently laughing at the stupefied Long Chen. What? Do you not recognize me after just this little time? Long Chen had never imagined that the guest looking for him was actually this woman. He felt as if he were dreaming. That woman was precisely the maiden who had protected him from crap brother she when he had attacked him on Sunset Mountain. No, no. I still haven't thanked Elder Sister for your help back then, said Long Chen hastily. Don't call me Elder Sister. It sounds weird. I'm Sister Menke's junior apprentice sister. My name is Lu Fang'er. So you can call me Sister Fang'er. She laughed. Haha. <laughs> then little brother Long Chen greets Sister Fang'er. Laughed Long Chen. He had a kind of friendly feeling towards this Lu Fang'er. Seeing her made him feel that the distance between and Menke was no longer as distant as before. He also had a way to pass on the soul nourishing pill. Haha. <laughs> Your mouth really is skillful. No wonder you've become the idol in the hearts of all the Phoenix Cry Empire's maidens. Lu Fang'er held out a drawing of him and laughed. Looking at that drawing, Long Chen immediately felt embarrassed. That was the cover of the comic depiction of his battle with Wang Chang. The Phoenix Cry Divine Battle. Cough. That was just a joke some merchants made. You confessed your emotions to a princess and then used your strength to defeat Chiring a powerful opponent. That was a joke. Lu Fang'er teased. Long Chen immediately felt his heart drop. If that matter was heard by Menki then, Long Chen, this isn't acceptable. My big sis is a fairy in human form. For her to have a favorable impression of you, do you not know how to treasure that? Lu Fang'er was dissatisfied. Since we know each other a bit, I'll give you some advice. Immediately break things off with that princess and I won't have to tell my big sis about it. His expression immediately changed when he heard this. Thinking about the warmth and tenderness Chu Yao currently felt for him. He shook his head and sighed. Sorry, I can't do that. As he said that he felt as if needles were stabbing into his heart. That decision was extremely difficult to make. Menki's beauty and kindness had been deeply imprinted into his heart. She had given him his first taste of love. As for Chu Yao, she would sacrifice her everything for him. Asking him to leave Chu Yao at this time was absolutely impossible for him. How can you be so stubborn? You aren't even satisfied with just my big sis. You actually have to play around with the women here too. If you choose her, then don't ever think about seeing my sister again. Warned Lu Fang'er angrily. Long Chen took a deep breath. In the face of his complicated feelings, he was completely helpless. He refused to give on either of them. But now he had to choose which one. Seeing that Long Chen remained silent, Lu Fang'er continued. Are you really going to give on my sister for some princess? I'm not giving up. I cannot give up on either one. Long Chen shook his head. Ha! Huh, your face really is thick. You actually want to monopolize two beauties for yourself. The angry Lu Fang'er actually laughed when she saw Long Chen act so confidently and shameless. Long Chen was startled at that. He didn't quite understand just what Lu Fang'er was saying. Ah, whatever. This is how a true man should act. If you really did give up that pitiful princess just to appease me, then you really would have had to say goodbye forever to my sister. Laughed Lu Fang'er. How could a man who is fickle in love possibly enter my sister's eyes? That was just a small test just now. I suppose you've just managed to pass. A bead of sweat silently rolled off Long Chen's forehead. A feeling of exhaustion rolled over him. He would rather have a huge battle with someone than endure such a test again. However, you're also celebrating too early. That test was just one I did from a personal point of view. As for my big sister, whether she will let you have another beauty along with her is something only she knows. Lu Fang'er laughingly warned him when she saw him relax. His nerves which had only just relaxed immediately tightened again. Lu Fang'er continued. But from what I understand about my sister, you should have the greatest chance out of all men. And with me helping you, your chances should increase even more. Then, I'll thank Sister Fang'er for the help, said Long Chen hastily. Haha, <laughs> I won't disturb you anymore. I had business to do in coming here. After flying for seven days and nights. I'm already completely exhausted. Plus, you don't even pour me a cup of tea. Sighed Lu Fang'er discontentedly. Oh, I'll immediately pour some tea for Sister Fang'er. 
Long Chen quickly and carefully poured a cup of tea for her. There was no way around it. He definitely had to give her a good impression for the sake of Meng Qi. Lu Fang'er took the teacup with a somewhat strange expression. Does your Long family normally like to use cold water for tea? Only then did Long Chen realize that the pot was already completely cold. But he thickened his face and said, This is cold tea that's supposed to be drunk cold. Sister Fang'er can try it. It'd be strange if anyone believed you. Scolded Fang'er. If Sister Fang'er doesn't want to drink cold tea, then I'll immediately steep some hot tea for you. Ah, forget about it. As long as you have the right heart, then it's fine. Coming and going like this is actually quite annoying. But if I didn't, then I'd feel too sorry for you. For a moment, Long Chen didn't know whether to laugh or cry. This Fang'er truly was mischievous. But she still gave off a very innocent and lively feeling. She said whatever she wanted to. It really was easy for people to feel friendly to her. The Wind Spirit Pavilion was many thousands of miles away from this place. Even if she was riding a magical beast, traveling for seven full days and nights was still extremely exhausting. So he could understand her teasing of him. Next, I'll tell you some good news. My sister gave me a gift for you. Lu Fanger pointed to a small trunk to the side. Only then did Long Chen realize there was a two feet tall rectangular trunk. When the trunk was gently opened, Long Chen was astonished to see that there was a small furred creature inside. It was a small wolf cub only the size of a palm. Its body was completely snow white. Only a small section of fur at the middle of its forehead was a fiery red color. It was extremely adorable. This small cub had yet to even open its eyes after being born. It was blindly searching around, appearing to look for food. Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf. Long Chen was extremely startled. This was the cub of a magical beast that he had read about before. The Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf. Its body was completely snow white with only a small lock of fur that was a blazing red color. It was extremely easy to recognize. But most Scarlet Flame Snow Wolves weren't of a completely pure bloodline. Their fur would be of a duller color and would even have some spots sometimes. But this Snow Wolf cub didn't have a single spot. That meant it was an extremely pure-blooded Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf. Such a Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf that was completely pure would grow to become an Overlord 3rd rank magical beast when matured. And it could even contend against 4th rank magical beasts. That was an existence that surpassed the Tendon Transformation Realm. Correct. This is a pure-blooded Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf that has just been born. It was given to my sister as a gift from her master. But she instead wanted me to fly through the night to give it to you. Lu Fang'er looked at Long Chen with a complicated expression. His heart shook. Not only had Men Qi not forgotten about him, but she actually worried about him. Such pure feelings from a beauty caused Long Chen to feel an urge to tear up. Originally, sister wanted it to be a weak house pit for you, but she definitely never thought that you'd have already become a pill adept. Your spiritual strength isn't low, so I can impart a couple of techniques to control beasts to you. Then... This Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf can become a battling houseboat, said Lu Fang'er. Ordinary martial artists would always have beast tamers use their martial force or other techniques to gradually tame the magical beast, letting it become a houseboat. But such a houseboat wasn't perfect. After all, magical beasts had a violent and brutal aura that could not be removed. A houseboat devouring their master was a common occurrence. But even so, magical beast houseboats were still extremely precious. Although it was a bit dangerous. Once it was properly trained and if it was used properly, a magical beast was definitely an extremely terrifying addition to your combat strength. What was special about a battle house but was that it could be controlled much better. However, to have such control over a magical beast required an extremely strong spiritual strength. Ordinary people were absolutely incapable of that. Using spiritual strength to connect and communicate with the magical beast, both beast and human could work together. Not only was the power of a battle house but much greater, but the chance of it betraying its master was also much lower. However, it also required having your spiritual strength connected to the magical beast for a long time, which was also exhausting. Men Qi didn't know about Long Chen's current strength. She had sent the cub in hopes that the Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf would follow Long Chen as it grew up and be an extra life-preserving measure in the future. But the current Long Chen was already a pill adept. Lu Fang'er directly imparted a few techniques for controlling magical beasts to him. What surprised Lu Fang'er was that Long Chen was able to comprehend the techniques with just a quick explanation. He would then ask a couple of questions that went right to the core of how the technique functioned. But there was a limit to how much Lu Fang'er could pass on to Long Chen. 
she could only teach him the common beast controlling techniques that circulated in the public. As for the core techniques of her sect, she didn't dare pass them on without permission. Long Chen's intelligence had completely won over Lu Fang Er. She realized Long Chen was definitely a monster. He remembered every word and comprehended everything almost immediately. He even asked her questions about ideas that she hadn't ever thought of. She stayed for half a day at the Long Estate. After Lu Fang Er saw that Long Chen had completely comprehended all the techniques she passed on to him, she directly left. But before she left, Long Chen gave her the precious soul nourishing pill to give to Men Qi. Once she left, Long Chen looked down at the little cup he was holding to his chest and couldn't help but feel a burst of warmth. The existence of this scarlet flame snow wolf was proof that he was present within Men Qi's heart. Long Chen couldn't help but feel extremely grand knowing that Men Qi cared about him. He hoped to resolve everything in the capital as soon as possible so that he could step out of these uncivilized lands and enter that vaster sky. That was because he knew there was an unmatched beauty waiting for him. Thinking of Men Qi, Long Chen felt his blood burn hotter. He had to quickly rise. Wa! Suddenly, the small cub in his arms let out a loud cry and started waddling all over his body. Looking at that little fellow, Long Chen smiled. But at that moment, he suddenly felt an extremely indistinct killing intent. Chapter 68 News of his father translator. Born to be there was someone spying on him. That was his first reaction. However, even after spreading out his divine sense throughout the entire long estate, he was unable to find anyone suspicious. But that feeling had definitely not been a mistake. With his perceptive spirit, he had definitely sensed that extremely indistinct killing intent. Long Chen was fully confident in his intuition. If there was no one suspicious in the Long household, then that meant the enemy was watching from further away. Seeing that the sky was already darkening, Long Chen muttered to himself and placed the puppy-like scarlet flame snow wolf back into its trunk. That trunk was something Lu Fang Er had brought over. Inside was a nourishing fluid that was enough for the cub to consume so that it wouldn't die. Setting up a proper place for the little cub, he then changed and left his estate. As expected, his intuition had been correct. As soon as he went past the gates, he sensed that he was being watched by people. A cold smile appeared on his face as he continued walking. He knew those people were preparing to kill him. If he had guessed correctly, they should have been waiting for nightfall to sneak into the long estate and assassinate him. He preferred not to fight in his home. So he left. And as he had expected, after he walked a dozen miles away and entered a remote region with no one else present, a sharp whistling arrow was shot straight for his back. By the time he reacted and went on guard, it was already too late. He was shot through, groaning as he tumbled to the ground. Over ten figures surrounded Long Chen. Those people were all wearing veiled masks. Raising their swords, they completely cut off any retreat paths. HMPH. What Phoenix cry number one junior generation. He's just an idiot. He was handled so easily. Sneered one of the masked men coldly. As soon as he finished his sentence, an arrow firmly shot him right through the stomach. His eyes widened and he didn't even dare look down at his stomach as he felt his life quickly fading. He tumbled to the ground. Even as he died, he had no idea just who it was that had killed him. Careful. The others all immediately retreated. Looking in shock at Long Chen, they noticed that the arrow on his back had disappeared. More importantly, Long Chen seemed absolutely fine. He got up from the ground and indifferently patted the dust off his clothes. Long Chen had long since been on guard. So how could it possibly have been so easy to ambush him? The very instant that arrow had been about to hit him, it had already been caught by him in midair. But he had faked being hit and tumbled to the ground powerlessly. Everything had been an act he had put on extremely convincingly. The reason he did this was to find out what this group had come for. The arrow had didn't have any poison on it, and the twang of the bowstring had been too loud. Professional assassins definitely wouldn't randomly walk up to an enemy who wasn't confirmed to be dead. Together. Following one of their shouts, the masked men suddenly released their auras. Blood key soared to the sky. Every single one of them was a blood condensation expert. With a metallic ring, a sword appeared in Long Chen's hand. That was the weapon of the one he had killed. He used it now to block one of their attacks. The person whose attack he blocked felt his hand turn numb. The power behind Long Chen's sword was shockingly great. The sword in his hand was blown away, and he was knocked onto his back. A cold light flashed over that person's body, and he was split into two. A rain of blood descended for a moment. Now that Long Chen had condensed eleven cyclones that had reached a terrifying size, even a random blow from him was practically unstoppable. 
After easily killing a blood condensation expert with a wave of his sword, the pungent smell of blood filled the air. The cyclones in his body almost seemed to have been provoked, and without any urging from Long Chen, they started to circulate faster and faster. In just the blink of an eye, two members of their group had died. Both shock and rage filled them. They bellowed angrily and charged all at the same time, each of them stabbing towards one of Long Chen's vital points. Long Chen coldly snorted. Spiritual key surged rapidly into his arms. Using just that one sword, Long Chen fended off the attacks of over ten people. With a crisp bang, key waves surged out with shockingly terrifying fluctuations. With the combined force of over ten people, they forced Long Chen back several steps. He wasn't injured at all. However, his sword was unable to take such terrifying strength and shattered, leaving only the hilt. They were all greatly shocked that Long Chen was able to fend off their combined attack alone. Three of them were even at the mid-blood condensation realm. Good. Again, one of them ordered. Although his voice was suppressed to be quiet, there was something indescribably strange about that voice. They didn't need this reminder since they all knew that this was the best moment. They all charged at the unarmed Long Chen. Looking at those masked black-robed attackers, a ridiculing smile appeared on his face. He lightly rubbed his ring. Golden light suddenly lit the sky up. A huge battle axe cut through the air. It was just like the full moon as it swung through a mournful arc blood and broken limbs flew everywhere. The terrifying strength of the battle axe dug a huge hole in the ground. Nine of them died under it. Now there were only three remaining. And that was because those three were somewhat slower. When they had seen a huge battle axe suddenly appear in his hands, they instinctively had slowed down slightly, allowing them to escape death. But while they had managed to survive, the others were not so lucky. In front of that huge battle axe, the swords in their hands were no different from toys. All of them had been crushed into pieces. That huge power had even managed to impress Long Chen. This was the domineering style of heavy weapons. Your power would multiply, allowing you to completely crush your enemies head on. But one of the drawbacks was that Long Chen needed two hands to hold the battle axe. That was because the handle was too thick. At the same time, just one hand strength was unable to draw out all of the potential power of the battle axe. Although that battle axe was extremely powerful, due to having used too much force, his arms ended up feeling extremely sore. Now it's time to send you guys to hell. He slowly raised the huge battle axe. Only then did the remaining three react. They immediately fled, disappearing in just a couple of blinks. Looking in the direction where those three were fleeing, Long Chen helplessly sighed. He sat himself down on the huge axe, seeming to not have the slightest intention of chasing after them. It wasn't that he didn't want to chase, but that he wouldn't be able to do anything to them even if he caught up. Due to underestimating the mountain splitting battle axe's weight and power, he had misjudged how much strength to use and ended up dislocating his own shoulder. His raising of the battle axe was just to scare them off. Otherwise, if they didn't flee, then he would be the one running, twisting his shoulder. He popped it back into its socket. Suddenly, he turned to some bushes to the side and said, Having hidden for so long, don't you think it's time to come out and say a few things? Those bushes remained silent. Long Chen smiled slightly, and suddenly, a red medicinal pill appeared in his hand. With a flick of his finger, the red pill fell into the bushes. That medicinal pill burst apart when it landed in the bushes. Countless strands of red smoke immediately filled the air. The smoke spread extremely quickly reaching hundreds of meters away. That was a poison pill. The pills refined from alchemists didn't just save lives. They also could take lives. Long Chen had kept that poison pill for a long time. Back in the heroic assembly house when he had fought against Wang Chang, he had just been about to use it when the crown prince had walked in. That was a life-preserving measure. But now that he had even better medicinal pills, that pill had lost its use. A figure quickly fled from the bushes, rushing towards the distance. I'd advise you not to run. Otherwise, in just a few minutes, the poison will reach your heart and you'll die, said Long Chen indifferently. That figure stopped and paused for a moment. Perhaps he was considering whether Long Chen was telling the truth or not. But in the end, he decided to stay. Young master's techniques truly are worthy of praise. That person slowly walked over and bowed. He appeared to be about in his twenties. He was slightly thin and appeared weak. His face was exceptionally plain. One that would be hard to pick out amongst a crowd. Who are you? Reporting to young master. This little one is Chen Fei. I was sent by your father to secretly protect his wife and son. Said Chen Fei. My father? Do you have any proof of that? Long Chen was pleasantly surprised. But he still needed proof. 
That person took out something from his robes and handed it to Long Chen. This is a keepsake. I really am ashamed. I believe that young master should definitely recognize it. Long Chen immediately turned a bit sour when he saw that thing. It was a bamboo sword. The first gift his father had ever given to him as a child. At that time, he had only been two years old. He had been so excited back then that he had wildly brandished it as if he were a great expert. Back then, his father had accompanied him like that every day. He would occasionally give him encouragement as he wildly swung his bamboo sword, and his mother would laugh secretly to the side. Those were the soft and warm days of their three-person family. Those days felt like they were just yesterday. He seemed to be able to see his father's strict but pampering expression. But a child was a child. A toy was something that didn't remain novel for long. He later became enraptured by real swords and blades. That bamboo sword was lost somewhere he had never bothered with Noveloon.com looking at the bamboo sword now. He saw there was a bright shine to it. That was obviously something that could only be left behind by stroking it thousands of thousands of times. Master really did wish to see his son and wife over these years, but he was absolutely unable to reunite with his family. However, if he learned that his son had reached such a level, he would definitely feel extremely gratified, said Chen Fei. Long Chen carefully put away the bamboo sword. This news of his father caused him to be even more excited than if he broke through his current realm. It had been so many years, but his father had never even once sent a letter back. Sometimes, he actually wondered if his father no longer wanted his wife and child. It would be a lie to say that he didn't have a bit of a grudge inside him. Hearing Chen Fei's words today, that sore point in his heart was finally released. At the same time, he was also a bit ashamed. In terms of trusting his father, he was far from equal to his mother. Come back to the estate. I have some things I want to talk about with you, said Long Chen. He had now understood many things. Although he didn't know the whole picture, he felt that he was now capable of changing his own fate. Young master, you believe me just like this. Chen Fei was surprised. Of course, I believe you. That's because if you had lied just now, the current you would already be a corpse. Chapter 69 The Secret Troubles of Long Shiang Xiao Translator Born to be of course, I believe you. That's because if you have lied just now, the current you would already become a corpse. Long Chen's light words were filled with self-confidence. Chen Fei was greatly alarmed, but examining his body, he didn't notice any changes. That pill that I threw out is called the soul-burning pill. Even if you completely stopped your breath just now, it would be pointless. That poisonous gas directly erodes your pores and enters your bloodstream. If you use too much strength or fight intensely, your blood will begin to flow quicker and the poison will immediately invade your soul. At that time, your death would be doubtless explained Long Chen. Chen Fei's expression changed. He had never imagined that Long Chen's poison pill would be so terrifying. But since Long Chen already trusted him, he definitely wouldn't deceive him now. The reason why I believe you is because I am confident in my pills. If you had lied when I questioned you just now, your blood would have begun circulating faster. By then, blood would flow out of your seven apertures. Here, eat this. Long Chen handed Chen Fei a medicinal pill. Chen Fei directly swallowed it. After taking this pill, the poison in your body will be detoxified. However, the effect is a bit slow, so you cannot undergo any intense fights for the next three days. Okay, let's go. Long Chen directly started walking back home. Chen Fei hastily went to keep up with him. They left behind a miserable area of blood and severed limbs. Bastard, you actually dare try to kill Long Chen behind my back? Do you think that I won't dare to kill you? Within a secret room. A white-robed man was angrily cursing at Xia Changfeng. A murderous aura came from him. At the same time, a terrifying killing intent seemed to take a solid form and locked Xia Changfeng in place. Xia Changfeng felt as if a cold blade was pressed against his neck. As long as the white-robed man wished it, his life would be over in an instant. Brother Luo, listen to me. This wasn't done by me. My sister ordered my subordinates. I knew nothing about it. Xia Changfen was completely terrified as he tried to explain the situation. Sweat had completely drenched his robes, as that killing intent was just too terrifying. Even he, a blood condensation expert, was unable to block it. He felt as if he were a tiny ant that was completely unable to resist. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you really think your guards would follow the orders of your sister without your go-ahead? You obviously wanted to remove that thorn Long Chen before you left. It's lucky that Long Chen didn't die. Otherwise, this matter would have truly blown up. Even if you had ten lives, you wouldn't be able to block the anger from those higher-ups. 
shouted the white-robed man coldly. Xia Changfen lowered his head and didn't dare say anything. It was true that the assassination attempt of Long Chen had been arranged by Xia Beiqi, but the white-robed man was entirely correct. He had lent his personal guards to her. He had hoped that once Long Chen was dead, he could push the blame onto Xia Beiqi. With her pill adept status, she should be fine. Having already borrowed so much money from Xia Beiqi at the auction, he had been forced by her to provide help. However, he hadn't expected that a group of blood condensation experts would fail and only have three of their members return. But before he could even clearly ask about what had happened, that white-robed man had already arrived. Xia Changfang, this is your last warning. Your job is minor. If the bigger plots go wrong, even your entire grand Xia is unable to handle the punishment, let alone you. Go back and tell your stupid sister that if she dares to take such a rash course once more, I will personally twist off her head. That old pervert Wei Kang never once truly placed her in his eyes, snorted the white-robed man coldly. Yes, yes, Chang Fen will definitely properly instruct his sister. I definitely won't cause any more trouble. Xia Chang Fen nodded his head over and over. Long Xiang Xiao has already stated that if anything unexpected happens to his wife or son, he will give up his border post and kill his way into the capital. That is the situation we want to avoid the most. Do you understand? The white-robed man coldly continued. We've been constantly testing his bottom line, but Long Xiang Xiao refuses to give us any reaction. However, that doesn't mean that he doesn't care about his wife and son. He is someone who either doesn't take action or strikes like lightning. That is him warning you guys. But you idiots weren't even able to understand that. Brother Luo. I still don't understand. With Brother Luo's skill, why don't you go and directly kill Long Xiang Xiao? Asked Xia Changfang. Idiot. If I really could just take action in the open, do you think I'd still need you guys? Furthermore, Long Xiang Xiao is also a tendon transformation expert. How is he so easy to kill? If I don't succeed in one blow and news of it spreads, who is going to take responsibility for that? Cursed the white-robed man. Xia Changfeng immediately felt awkward, but he didn't dare retort. He just endured it obediently. But his hatred towards Long Chen only continued to grow. Xia Beiqi's actions were actually something he had also wanted. But since Long Chen hadn't died, the anger inside him could only continue to be stifled. He really had never imagined that over 10 blood condensation experts working together would still be unable to kill him. Moreover, his losses were actually so great. When Xia Changfen returned to his room, that white-robed man sighed. It had been troublesome for him to get such an easy mission, but perhaps it wouldn't be as easy as he had thought. He had been so enraged just now that he had almost slaughtered Xia Changfeng, but he couldn't actually do that. The plan had been in motion for many years. In fact, he had originally come here to reap the final profits that someone else had worked for. However, the result was that he felt as if everyone around him was completely stupid, infuriating him. He had a stomach full of anger that he had nowhere to let out. He didn't dare show himself publicly, so he needed to work together with the Grand Xia. A cold smile appeared on his face. If you really ruin my plans, then all of you can just die here. It was already late into the night by the time Long Chen returned home. Once he was in his room, he carefully looked over Chen Fei. He was surprised to find that his aura was extremely veiled. Even with Chen Fei right in front of him, it was still difficult to sense his existence. I train in a special cultivation technique that increases my ability to hide my aura. Young master doesn't need to think it's strange. Although he was modest, inside he was still a bit conceited. He had absolute confidence in his aura concealing techniques. Long Chen nodded. Chen Fei was truly quite good at that, as he hadn't noticed the slightest trace of him until that time. Today, when his sword had been shattered, and it seemed as if he might be in danger, Chen Fei had ended up giving off some of his aura. Otherwise, he still wouldn't have noticed him. At that time, he had clearly been about to intervene. Also, Long Chen hadn't sensed any hostility at that time, so he knew Chen Fei was trying to save him. That was why Long Chen had originally guessed that Chen Fei didn't have any evil intentions against him. But to be safe, he had still decided to use the poison pill. The current Long family was in an extremely unstable position. At any moment, it might capsize. He didn't dare to be the slightest bit careless, and he refused to gamble the lives of his Long household's people. How are things where my father is? Taking a deep breath. Long Chen go to the point. He was extremely curious about what was going on with his father. So much time had passed that even his memories of his father had become indistinct. 
but his father's love from his childhood still remained deeply buried in his heart. Your father is safe and sound. However, in the most recent years, the battles with the barbarian tribes have become increasingly intense, not to mention the lack of reinforcements from the capital. His original army of 50,000 troops has shrunk to only 20,000. Luckily, the surrounding commoners care about your father's benevolence, sending him women and sons to supplement his army as well as army provisions. If it weren't for them, we'd have long since been unable to persevere. Anger could be heard within his voice. The capital's attitude towards Long Shiang Xiao truly was a bitter disappointment. If it weren't for them seeing the many commoners' ardent gazes, they would have already left. The barbarian tribes were actually many separate tribes. They were simply grouped together as barbarian tribes as a generic group term. Born in the savage wilderness, they had to use cruel methods just to survive in their harsh environment. They hunted and gathered their food, just barely managing to survive. But that harsh environment actually ended up tempering them, and most of their population was much stronger than an ordinary commoner. As they grew stronger, they naturally began to develop and spread out claiming more and more lands. In the end, they had found the border of the Phoenix Cry Empire with its rich lands and produces. Plundering this place was much easier than hunting. The reason they were called barbarian tribes was also because they lived their lives very differently from ordinary people. Whole families would sleep together on the same bed. They also copulated without any regard to generation or sex. It definitely seemed chaotic to others. Other than their own tribe, the other tribes were just prey. Tribes would attack other tribes indiscriminately, and if they ended up capturing Phoenix Cry's commoners, the men would just be killed and stored as food, while the women would be used for sex and then killed for food. Phoenix Cry's commoners both hated and were afraid of them. The barbarian tribes ended up plundering more and more as time went on, and only once that had reached a shocking point had the empire finally reacted. Unfortunately the barbarian tribes actually had a surprisingly large population. They traveled like the wind disappearing one night and appearing at a whole new place. They weren't like Phoenix Cry's commoners who had set residences. It was basically impossible to find their nest, and so Phoenix Cry's troops could only stay on the defense. But once Long Shiang Xiao was sent to the border, he repeatedly launched sneak attacks against the barbarian tribes, causing the rivers to run red with their blood. This ended up intimidating the barbarian tribes, while the commoners near the border could all take a breath of relief and live in peace. That was how Long Shiang Xiao ended up becoming a military god in the eyes of the commoners. As Long Shiang Xiao's army fought with the barbarian tribes, the frequent raids ended up costing a great deal. Without reinforcements, the army's troops quickly dwindled. Seeing this happen, the surrounding commoners all helped and supported him to the best of their abilities. If they had extra manpower, then they sent their sons to join the army. If they had extra money, then they sent food over. Everything they could afford was sent to border suppression army. However, that kind of supply was far from enough. When the army wasn't fighting, they would always go help the commoners farm, which was also a way to increase their own supplies. So, the commoners and army men along the border were basically all one family now, recalling their eyes that were filled with hope and expectation. Chen Fei's eyes reddened slightly. Even if they had to die, they definitely wouldn't allow those commoners to suffer any harm. Chen Fei told all this to Long Chen, allowing him to finally understand his father's secret troubles. On one side were his wife and son, while on the other were the lives of millions of innocent commoners. If it was Long Chen instead, he would also be hard-pressed to choose. That grievance he had had against his father melted into nothing, and pride filled his heart. A brave expert who fights for an empire's people, that was a true hero. Chen Fei, return to where my father is. Long Chen thought about it but still ended up wanting him to return. Chen Fei's expression changed. I absolutely cannot. Chapter 70 Little Snow Translator Born to be I absolutely cannot. Chen Fei explained. Just before I left to come here, your father ordered me that I absolutely, no matter what, had to stay here to protect his wife and son. Even in death, Long Chen shook his head. Although you are a late blood condensation expert, you are no longer able to protect me. The fact that you didn't help me back when I was injured on the martial arena means that you are extremely apprehensive and will only act to help once I am facing death. But at that time, even if you did help, you wouldn't be able to fix anything. Am I right? Chen Fei was silent for a long while. That was because Long Chen's words were absolutely true and he couldn't refute them. Within the capital, the only person who could make you feel so apprehensive should be Marquis Ying. Correct? Asked Long Chen. Chen Fei sighed and nodded. Correct. 
Your father warned me over and over again not to let Marquis Ying notice me. Otherwise, my life would be over. I'm not afraid of death, but I am afraid of betraying your father's expectations. That's why despite you being bullied so much, I could only continue to stay my hand. I truly am sorry. Does my father have enmity with Marquis Ying? Marquis Ying's finger was severed by your father, laughed Chen Fei. No wonder Marquis Ying would target me. Father really is ferocious, but I won't fall behind. My father severed a finger, while I made him lose all his money. When did you first come to the capital? Asked Long Chen. Three years ago. And how many experts on your level does my father have beside him? There were originally seven, but one of them died after many years of fighting. So there are only six now. What heaven stage have you reached? The ninth heaven stage of blood condensation. But unfortunately, I've never been able to break through the next barrier. Sighed Chen Fei. He was already 37 years old. If he still wasn't able to break through by the age of 40, it would essentially be impossible for him to do so for the rest of his life. Long Chen wasn't that surprised. Although Chen Fei was extremely good at hiding his aura, blood key had emerged from the space between his eyebrows. That was a clear sign of blood being condensed to its densest state. In other words, Chen Fei had to be at the peak of blood condensation. Unfortunately, he was unable to break through the next barrier. To break through the blood condensation realm to reach the tendon transformation realm was extremely difficult. There were thousands of blood condensation experts in Phoenix Cry, but only three tendon transformation experts. The two were separated by a huge chasm that caused everyone who stood in front of it to despair. Chen Fei, I'll refine some pills tonight. Bring them to my father. Long Chen was almost talking to himself. Young master, this. Long Chen waved his hand, cutting him off. Although your aura concealing techniques are exquisite, allowing you to hide from even Marquis Ying's senses, the entire Phoenix Cry capital is undergoing intense undercurrents. That means that the entire empire will soon be flipped. Whether you stay or not has no meaning. If my long family truly did reach that end point where you would finally take action, do you really think you could manage to fight against that tide with just your strength? I can bring you out alive, said Chen Fei. Long Chen's face darkened. And what about my mother? Chen Fei was immediately speechless. His aura concealing techniques were powerful, but he was actually even stronger when it came to his fleeing techniques. He was confident that even if Marquis Ying was the opponent, he would still have an 80% chance of saving Long Chen. But he really was unable to reply when it came to Long Chen's mother. He could at most bring along one extra person. In other words, his mother would have to be a sacrifice. Sorry young master, but these are my master's orders. I must follow them. Chen Fei shook his head. Long Chen couldn't help being both startled and furious. His father had actually decided to sacrifice his mother to save him in that situation. Perhaps that was because of his pampering of him, but he was completely unable to accept that. Taking a deep breath, Long Chen suppressed his fury and coldly said, Chen Fei, I'm not arguing with you. I am ordering you. Don't end up hurting me and my mother just for some silly order. I'm going to the Alchemist Guild right now to get some medicinal ingredients. I'll spend all night refining, and you will bring them to my father. Don't even speak about saving me and my mother. If I wanted your life right now, it would be as effortless as blowing off dust. Right now, I have the strength to temporarily protect the Long household. But events are rapidly turning, and I need my father's help quickly. So now I'm giving you two options. Listen to me and return to my father's side, or die here. Without more of the antidote, the poison will still inevitably kill you. Chen Fei's expression became a mix of green and white. He could easily hear the fury within Long Chen's words. He could almost see the image of Long Shiang Xiao within him. He was certain that if he dared to disobey, Long Chen really would take his life. He wasn't afraid of death, but such a meaningless death truly would not be worth it. Anyways, this was a matter for the Long family. He could only bitterly smile and agree. Of course, inside he was extremely agonized. Just how was he supposed to face Long Shiang Xiao once he returned? Long Chen went straight to the Alchemist Guild. Now that he had so much money from the auction, he no longer needed to worry about buying medicinal ingredients on credit. Coming to the Guild now had definitely been a smart decision, as they had all the medicinal ingredients he required. Using Chen Fei as a guard, Long Chen directly started using his flame to warm the furnace. The pill he was refining this time was called the Breaking Barrier Pill. It was an extremely ordinary second-tier medicinal pill that could increase the chance of breaking through bottlenecks. But the medicinal formula Long Chen was using had come from the pill God's memories. 
It used the same medicinal ingredients, but through merging them in different proportions, it created an entirely different effect. In addition, Long Chen had added dragon bone grass as well. That kind of intense medicinal ingredient would increase the pill's medicinal energy. This was no longer an ordinary breaking barrier pill. This breaking barrier pill was used to attack the tendon transformation realm. The lower grade breaking barrier pill could give people an extra 10% chance of breaking through. But the one Long Chen was planning on refining was a higher quality pill and could give cultivators an extra 30% chance of breaking through. If that was learned by others, it would definitely shake the current world. Such a medicinal pill was even more shocking than the flesh bone restoration pill from the auction. In reality, that flesh bone restoration pill had a large flaw. However, Long Chen hadn't told them about it. If an ordinary person would to have their limbs severed, then they really could grow a new limb without any problems. But if a cultivator took it, they would use their spirit roots true spiritual core energy to heal it. That would end up shortening their peak potential. Back then, Long Chen had cut off Fu Ji Yui's arm, and he had healed it without causing any problems. But later when Yao Nikian called up Xiao Yang, well, in any case, adventurers were in constant danger of being cut like that. And it wasn't as if Xiao Yang could have resisted Yao Nikian's charm anyway. Boom. The medicinal furnace shook. Opening it, three round medicinal pills appeared. A faint glimmer shined off them, causing a weary Long Chen to smile. This was his third furnace of pills. The first time he had succeeded in refining three pills. But the second time he had just been slightly distracted for a moment, causing an explosion. The pill furnace only narrowly managed to avoid being destroyed. However, the ingredients had turned to ashes. Refining pills was simply like that. Just the slightest inattentiveness could easily cause failure. Even with all the techniques of a pill god, it would be impossible to avoid some failures. His goal had been to refine two furnaces worth of pills. Now that he had failed once, he had no choice but to attempt a third one despite his exhaustion. The breaking barrier pill, which had the dragon bone grass added to it, was extremely hard to refine. Even with Long Chen's powerful spiritual strength, he was still completely exhausted. But looking at the six medicinal pills, he felt that all that exhaustion was worth it. He handed them to a shocked Chen Fei in addition to a letter. Chen Fei left before the break of dawn. Long Chen took a quick nap to re-energize himself. Waking up, he realized he felt much freer and less worried. The matter of his father had always been pressing on him like a huge boulder. Now that he had finally learned of his father's situation, he was filled with anticipation. The only thing that kept worrying him was that Chen Fei hadn't known just who was targeting his father. Long Xiang Xiao had never told anyone about that, but that wasn't too important anymore. Now that he had news of his father, he was filled with fighting spirit. Getting out of bed, he placed Little Snow in front of him. Little Snow was what Long Chen had decided to name the Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf. Little Snow's eyes were still permanently closed as he cried and fussed. Long Chen smiled slightly and bit down on his finger, drawing a drop of blood. He dripped the blood into Little Snow's mouth. When Little Snow swallowed that drop of blood, his closed eyes finally opened slowly. He curiously looked up at Long Chen. His large eyes plus the small tuft of red hair on his forehead were indescribably cute. For most magical beasts, the flavor of the first blood they tasted would be forever remembered. The owner of that blood would then become their family, of course. Cold-blooded magical beasts were accepted from this. There were different techniques for them. As soon as Little Snow opened his eyes, he slowly started to crawl over to Long Chen. His walking was extremely unstable and he might trip and fall at any moment, but he still continued crawling towards him. 1. Long Chen felt a burst of warmth when he looked at the little fellow. With his powerful spiritual strength, he could clearly sense the yearning within Little Snow's soul. As soon as Little Snow approved of Long Chen, Long Chen was supposed to use his spiritual strength to use the secret techniques Lu Fanger had taught him. That would place a kind of slave imprint on Little Snow's soul so that he could never betray him. But Long Chen continued to hesitate about using the slave imprint. He couldn't bear to make this little guy a slave. Pondering over this, he suddenly felt his face become wet. That little guy had crawled onto his lap and was enthusiastically washing his face. Long Chen laughed and hugged the little guy. He brought Little Snow out of the long estate to the outskirts of the city. Now that the little guy had opened his eyes, it was time for him to temper himself. Magical beasts had an extremely tenacious vitality. As soon as they opened their eyes, they were essentially capable of finding and eating their own food. They would no longer require that nutrient fluid they had needed as a cub. Bringing him out of the city was precisely the fastest way for Little Snow to mature. 
But before he left the city, he still had to find a certain someone. In just an hour, Long Chen arrived at a large pasture. Suddenly, a huge roar rang out, and the entire earth trembled along with it. A smile appeared on Long Chen's face. Chapter 71 12th Level of Key Condensation Translator Born to be the Southern Pass was almost a thousand miles to the southwest of the capital. It was a narrow pass between sharp mountains and cliffs that represented the border with the Grand Zaya. Within the mountain range were huge trees that reached for the sky and countless wild beasts. Magical beasts even occasionally roamed there. It was a wild land with no signs of human habitation. The Southern Pass had a mountain valley that was sided by tall, precipitous cliffs. The mountain valley had to be traversed in order to get to the Grand Zaya. Boom. Within the depths of the mountain range was a secluded pool. Long Chen was sitting cross-legged on a boulder. With another muffled bang from within his body, a twelfth cyclone was born. The originally three-meter-wide cyclones immediately grew to become a terrifying 30 meters. It really did make him feel numb. For most key condensation cultivators, their cyclones were only the size of a fist. Some of them might have their cyclones be a foot wide. If a person's cyclone was two feet long, then that would qualify them as a legendary genius. But Long Chen's cyclones had already reached an incomparable size. 1. The size of the cyclones dictated how quickly you could absorb spiritual key from heaven and earth. Even once you advanced to blood condensation, your cyclones would still remain. In other words, your cyclones were your ultimate way of absorbing spiritual key. Normally, you would be extremely happy to have your cyclones grow larger. But once they grew so large that it was inconceivable, that would naturally be startling and frightening. Long Chen looked inside his dantian. The twelve cyclones were like a group of huge mouths that were voraciously devouring heaven and earth's spiritual key. The spiritual key in this place was much denser than in the capital. Long Chen had managed to break through in just a couple of days. He was becoming more and more worried and uncertain about the nine-star hegemon body art. Just when was the end of this? The size of the cyclones was now completely shocking. Just as Long Chen was thinking things over, a snow-white little fellow jumped onto the huge rock he was on and wiggled into his embrace. Looking at that adorable fellow, Long Chen immediately put aside those worries and picked him up. Lu Fanger had taught Long Chen how to raise magical beasts. Over the past two days, Long Chen had caught several wild pheasants and used their blood to nourish little snow. What had caused Long Chen to click his tongue in wonder was that magical beasts truly were magical beasts. As soon as Little Snow had drunk their blood, he had immediately started to grow stronger, no longer stumbling and staggering when he walked. What was most inconceivable to him was that despite Little Snow not having any teeth, he actually had tightly bit down on the pheasant, tearing away a piece of flesh and swallowing it in one gulp. But Little Snow's throat wasn't wide enough and the food got stuck. The little guy ended up rolling around in panic. Long Chen was given a fright and hastily picked the food out of his throat. But the little guy actually seemed to act on instinct and immediately started to tear at more flesh. Long Chen was helpless to that and could only tear the pheasant into small enough pieces for him. However, the result was that Long Chen's eyes almost popped out of his head. Little Snow was originally only a bit larger than a hand, but he actually managed to finish half the pheasant which was almost twice his size. Even after half that pheasant, Little Snow's belly only enlarged slightly. He then crawled beside Long Chen and took a long nap. After the nap, he actually began to eat again. In just a couple of days, he had already grown to become a foot long. He had even grown four new teeth. Although they were still extremely immature, Little Snow still had enough power behind them to tear his food on his own now. The little fellow actually appeared very fierce, but he was extremely affectionate with Long Chen. After he was tired, he would crawl into Long Chen's embrace and doze off. Sometimes, he would even lick Long Chen's face. Unfortunately, now Long Chen really couldn't use him to wash his face. Now that little snow had started to eat flesh, the smell was a bit too strong. Long Chen gently stroked little snow. Whenever he looked at the little fellow, he would think of Menki's perfectly beautiful image. A fire would burn within his heart. Boom. Long Chen saw that a couple of miles away in a forest, a huge tree toppled down. At the same time, an earth-shaking row rang out. Long Chen shook his head and rushed over there while holding Little Snow. Arriving at the jungle, he saw that the forest now had an area hundreds of meters wide that was a complete mess. The trees in this area had all been snapped and crushed. Within the center of that disorderly zone was a huge figure holding a three-meter-long huge savage bull. Wild. How many times have I told you to use a bit of skill when hunting? Use the smallest amount of energy to achieve your goal. 
Long Chen looked helplessly at Wild. He, Brother Long, I remembered what you said right up till the point I saw my prey. Wild scratched his head in embarrassment, looking at the huge bull whose neck had been snapped. He didn't know just what to say. Wild's strength seemed endless. He was just like a terrifying magical beast in human form. But it seemed that when it came to using skillful techniques, he didn't have any talent at all. Along their path, in order to keep himself full, Wild had already killed four magical beasts. Although this savage bull was just a first-rank magical beast, its strength was still shocking. An ordinary blood condensation cultivator wasn't necessarily a match for it, but it was nothing more than a chicken in front of Wild. Its neck had been broken without it having the slightest ability to resist. Wild's favorite method of fighting was to directly use his full force to completely overwhelm his opponent. This caused quite a headache for Long Chen. It was just like he was magical beast. He favored attacking instinctively. He could remember things while not fighting, but as soon as he was in battle, everything would be thrown out of his head. Okay, well let's handle this bull for now. I'll skin off the fur and bury the viscera. Long Chen took out a sharp knife and began to skin the bull. That kind of meticulous work was something he didn't even bother trying to get Wild to do. Maybe if it was crushing the bull into a pulp he could ask Wild to do it. The scent of a magical beast's blood could spread extremely far. Even if it was a hundred miles away, other magical beasts could smell it. After gutting and skinning it, Wild brought the meat back to the camp. The camp location Long Chen had chosen was behind a waterfall. There was a natural cave there, a ready-made shelter. In addition, the flowing waterfall could block their scent, making it more difficult for other magical beasts to notice them. Although they weren't afraid of ordinary magical beasts, being sneak attacked was also extremely troublesome. If it was a venomous magical beast, then that would be a fatal danger. The cave was very wide. Long Chen started a fire and cooked the bull on a frame over the flame, roasting it. In less than two hours, a fragrant smell filled the cave. When Little Snow smelled it and saw the huge bull, he struggled free of Long Chen's embrace and charged right at it. Long Chen was startled and hastily grabbed him. If he was a bit slower, then Little Snow would have already jumped into the fire. Although that wouldn't burn him to death, his snow white fur would all be scorched. Don't make trouble. Long Chen put on an angry expression for Little Snow. The little fellow seemed to be able to sense Long Chen's anger and immediately became more obedient. His large eyes stared into the ground, and he didn't dare look Long Chen in the eyes, seeming to acknowledge his error. Although Long Chen hadn't placed a slave imprint on him, with a couple of the techniques Lu Fang Er had left him that were used to communicate and connect with him, he was still able to clearly express his state of mind. But if a slave imprint had been placed on him, he could make him die with just a thought. He would never be able to betray him or even having any thoughts of betraying him. Long Chen didn't treat the little fellow as a slave, but more as a partner and companion. After all, the current Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf was just like a child, so he still needed Long Chen's help to figure out what he shouldn't do. Little Snow peeked up and saw that Long Chen's expression was still gloomy. He slowly raised his head and started rubbing back and forth against Long Chen's chin, almost as if he was petting him. Long Chen wanted to laugh inside but he still endured. If he let it end just like this, then Little Snow would be even bolder next time. He had to teach him a lesson. The little fellow rubbed him for a long time. Seeing that Long Chen's face still remained dark, he actually lowered his head and started to cry. Long Chen practically couldn't believe his own eyes. Carefully examining him, he confirmed that they really were tears. His nose even sneezed a few times as if he were choked with sobs. Okay, well, next time don't act like that. It's dangerous and will hurt you. Understood. Long Chen bitterly smiled and gently rubbed Little Snow's head. The little fellow seemed to have understood Long Chen's meaning and once more started using his small head to rub Long Chen's chin. Long Chen sighed. It seemed he also had to worry about this fellow as well. Looking to the side where Wild was currently salivating, he felt a huge headache oncoming. When it was essentially cooked, Long Chen cut off a large piece and gave it to Little Snow. The little fellow didn't like eating ground meat and preferred torn off pieces. Long Chen merely cut off several kilograms of meat. The rest was all given to Wild because Wild's stomach seemed to be like a bottomless pit that would never be full. Even though he already was well aware of Wild's appetite, seeing him practically sucked up the wild bull that was several tons in an instant still caused him to feel some shock. Looking from the bones on the ground to Wild who still seemed to want to keep eating, Long Chen didn't know just what to say. According to Wild, Magical beast's meat tasted exceptionally good to him and after eating he would feel as if his full body was filled with power. 
It was much more efficient than eating beef. Long Chen once more examined Wild's body and found that those sleeping cells were all gradually recovering. A very good sign. At the same time, he also realized that magical beast meat was extremely important to Wild. It seemed that the stronger the meat, the more it would help Wild grow. After eating, Little Snow's belly was as round as ball. He crawled up next to Wild and started snoring. Long Chen also started to cultivate. Since there was no way for him to advance to blood condensation, he might as well just condense another cyclone. As for Wild, he hesitated for a moment. With the mountain splitting battle axe on his back, he continued to go hunting. It seemed he really would never be full. The next day at noon, a burst of wind blew by, bringing with it a couple of voices. The cultivating Long Chen slowly opened his eyes. The person he had been waiting for had finally arrived. Chapter 72 Wild shows his my translator. Born to be a luxurious carriage pulled by a savage bull magical beast was slowly traveling through the southern passes valley. There were a dozen guards around the carriage. Suddenly, the carriage paused. Inside the carriage, Xia Changfen frowned and irritably asked, Why have we stopped? The reason Xia Changfen was returning back to the Grand Xia was due to two reasons. Not only did he want to prepare for his wedding with Phoenix Cry's third princess, but the white-robed man had also ordered him to prepare for more important matters. That was why Xia Changfen had ordered his subordinates to travel throughout the day and night as quickly as possible. They had only used one day and one night's time to arrive at the Southern Passes Valley. With another half a day of travel, they would exit the valley and arrive in the Grand Xia. Traveling on a flying magical beast would be much faster, but due to how many people he had, that was not an option. Furthermore, flying magical beasts were large targets. If they ended up running into a stronger group of flying magical beasts, they would definitely die without the slightest chance of fleeing. Prince, there are people blocking the path, reported one of the guards outside the carriage. Who? Xia Changfen was startled. People you're familiar with. Xia Changfen frowned and exited his carriage. The valley was extremely narrow here. If they wanted to get through this pass, they had to go through that junction. But at that narrow opening were two figures standing there calmly. When he saw who they were, Xia Changfen laughed, and a dark light flashed in his eyes. Long Chen, are you waiting here to say goodbye? Xia Changfen waved his hand and his guards all spread out, quickly forming a half ring around Long Chen and Wild. Long Chen looked at Xia Changfen and nodded. You're right. Seeing how arduous your travels are, I decided to get here a step earlier and help send you on your way. Don't tell me you two are here because you think you can assassinate me. Xia Changfen sneered. Well, I don't think assassinate is the right word. We're slaughtering today. One. His face turned icy cold as he pointed at Xia Changfeng. I won't play any more meaningless word games with you. You bastard. Was the hidden energy within Chu Yao's body you're doing? Being reminded of Chu Yao's experiences. Long Chen's killing intent sword. Currently, Chu Yao could essentially count as his woman. So he was completely unable to accept such a thing. At the same time, Chu Yao's experiences reminded him of his own. If what had happened to his body was related to Xia Changfeng. Then Xia Changfen was his greatest chance of finding the true person behind this. Xia Changfen's expression changed slightly. Obviously, Long Chen's words startled him, but he coldly replied, It seems you actually know quite a bit, but that's not a problem. A dead man can know as much as he wants without any harm. This reply was extremely vague and wasn't what Long Chen had been hoping to hear. However, he could now confirm for sure that Xia Changfen knew many things. Long Chen laughed. Perhaps he would be able to learn many of those secrets from Xia Changfen today. Long Chen, I originally thought that you were a smart guy, but today I find that I was wrong. Nonetheless, I'm actually pretty happy that I was wrong. You actually dared to come here to assassinate me with just the two of you? I don't know whether to praise you for your boldness or to laugh at your stupidity. Looks like after killing Wang Chang, your appetite has really grown without limit. Do you think you are unmatched under the heavens? Wang Mang. Weren't you always complaining I didn't give you a chance to display your feelings? Here, the chance has come. Go cut off that arrogant kid's head, said Xia Changfeng disdainfully. Xia Changfeng's last sentence was towards one of his guards. That Wang Mang was extremely tall and strong, and his face was as black as coal. Hearing Xia Changfeng's command, he sneered, revealing a set of sinister white teeth, appearing just like a bloodthirsty animal. Wang Mang was also one of his guards that was just like Wang Chang. He was one of Xia Changfeng's secret weapons. However, Wang Chen was in the sun while he was in the dark. Anyone who knew Xia Changfeng had known about Wang Chang. 
but no one had known about this black-faced guard. Don't worry master, I can crush him in less than 10 exchanges. Wang Mang laughed and rushed forward. A long broadsword was pulled out of its sheath in Wang Mang's hands, causing Long Chen's eyes to narrow slightly. Most broadswords were only slightly wider than regular swords, a width of around four fingers. That was because as the width increased, the thickness also had to increase. In the end, a broadsword was many times heavier than a regular sword. Most cultivators that could use broadswords were those specialized in power. And as for Wang Mang, his broadsword had reached a shocking width of 7 inches. 7 inches wide and 3 inches thick. Its weight was definitely shocking. Before the sword even reached, a terrifying whistling gale had already blown over. The air revolved around it as it chopped down at Long Chen. You're mine. Long Chen didn't move. Behind him, Wild shouted and the mountain splitting battle axe in his hand cut through the air. It turned into a whistling golden light that clashed with Wang Mang's broadsword. Sparks shot everywhere and an ear-ringing explosion rang out. Some of the guards had their eardrums split from the explosive ringing. Blood slowly flowed out of their ears, and they were unable to hear anything after. Both sides were blown back. Wild thudded back three steps before stabilizing. But Wang Mang was blown ten meters back despite doing his best to stabilize himself. His legs left behind two deep scars on the ground. After just that one earth-shattering exchange, all of Xia Changfeng's men looked at the giant Wild with horror. When Xia Changfeng saw Wild's mountain splitting battle axe, his pupil shrunk as he recognized it from the auction. That was something that weighed over two tons. Looking at Wild's stature and huge hands, it was as if that battle axe had been custom made for him. It wasn't heavy at all to him. While Xia Changfeng was shocked, Wang Mang was even more shocked. Ever since he had been a child, he had always possessed an extremely great innate strength. That broadsword in his hand weighed over a ton, and by using it in combat, there were extremely few people in the same realm as him who could manage to endure even three exchanges. Although Wang Chen was also one of Xia Changfeng's secret weapons, Wang Mang would still be able to defeat Chiring him in ten exchanges even if he used his beast transformation. However, now he was forced back by a blockhead who didn't have the slightest fluctuations of a cultivation base. Not only was he shocked, but he was also infuriated. Wang Mang roared and blood key soared from his body. He had originally been planning on fighting Long Chen, so he hadn't wanted to display his full strength. Reserving his strength was simply his habit from being raised with Wang Chen as one of Xia Changfeng's secret weapons. But now there was someone who might actually surpass him in terms of brute strength. His anger soared. He definitely would not allow such a person to emerge. The sword in his hand shivered and space began to rumble. This time the gale winds released from his broadsword sounded even more mournful. Almost as if Yama King of Hell was demanding lives. This kind of harsh and cold attack was extremely terrifying. But while Long Chen was shocked, he was also relieved. Wang Mang was someone who focused on pure power and didn't like skillful techniques. Although his style was simple, his killing power was also great. Luckily, this kind of attack was the easiest for the simple Wild to handle. That was because Wild also didn't understand any skilled techniques. Boom. They once more collided fiercely, intensely shaking the earth and releasing terrifying key waves that spread out, withering the vegetation and causing destruction everywhere. If it had just been the withering of the grass and the earth being crushed, then it would have been fine. However, there were also many boulders and smaller stones that were split and sent flying out, due to the earlier collision being so intense that many of the guards could no longer hear. One of them was actually directly shot through the head with one of those flying rock fragments. The terrifying force behind it made the rock shoot straight through his head, causing his corpse to fall silently to the ground. The others all hastily retreated when they saw that. Such a battle was too intimidating. To die like that without even knowing what happened was truly too meaningless. Explosive collisions continued to ring out as one huge broadsword and one huge battle axe continuously crashed. Sparks shot wildly every time they collided, and even the earth would shake as well. Looking at Wild who seemed to be possessed by a god of war, a bit of excitement rose in Long Chen's heart. Wild had finally started to show off his might, although this currently still wasn't his full strength. In any case, at least his sweat and tears in training him weren't completely wasted. But that was also because they had been lucky enough to run into Wang Mang. If it had been Wang Chang, Wild probably would not have been able to hold on. Wild had no fighting experience. Any experiences he had were only from going hunting with Long Chen these few days. Furthermore, Wild had no idea how to properly attack. Even up until this point, Wild would only react defensively after seeing his opponent's attack. 
If Wild really did strike, that would completely reveal his fatal weak point. But Wang Mang's wild series of attacks had actually masked Wild's weak points. If it had been Wang Chang, he would definitely have first probed out his opponent's weak spots before delivering a killing blow. But Wang Mang didn't have any information on Wild. Otherwise, no matter how much strength Wild had, he would probably have been defeated in just a couple of exchanges. Wang Mang was actually provoked to see that Wild only defended without attacking. In fact, he even became angry, thinking Wild was playing around with him. His attacks became more and more aggressive. In just the blink of an eye, a dozen exchanges passed. But what surprised Long Chen was that Wild's skill with the battle axe was actually increasing. He no longer seemed like a beginner. When it came to battle axe techniques or skills, Long Chen had never taught a single one to Wild. That was because even if he had, it would have been useless. And furthermore, it wasn't as if Long Chen knew any of them anyways. Wild seemed to have a kind of innate instinct for battle. As the battle progressed, he could actually automatically comprehend things. It was just like how his body didn't need to cultivate and would just automatically absorb spiritual key from the world. Seeing that Wild was capable of holding his own under Wang Mang's torrential blows, Long Chen thanked his luck. Wang Mang's luck truly was terrible. He was actually suppressed by Wild who didn't have any fighting experience. His broadsword's focus was not on skillful techniques, but on using brute force to smash the opponent. Unfortunately, the result was that under Wild's might, he was unable to display that kind of power. If it had been a different expert skilled in softer techniques, Wild would have been quickly defeated. The world truly was marvelous. He had made the right choice to bring Wild along. Seeing Wild was temporarily not in any danger, Long Chen didn't wait any longer. It was time for him to take advantage of the shock Wild had caused everyone. Looking at the stunt Xia Changfeng, Long Chen shot forward, smashing his fist down. Chapter 73 Beheading Xia Changfeng Translator Born to be Xia Changfeng had never imagined that the powerful weapon he had hidden by his side for so long would be held up by some random blockhead. After all, Wang Mang's combat ability was such that even Wang Chen would be unable to endure 10 exchanges from him. But that big blockhead had already blocked over 30 blows and even seemed as if he had the energy to spare. How could that possibly not shock him? Back in the heroic assembly house, Wild had used his full strength to just barely block a single blow from Wang Chang. That was actually something Xia Changfeng had questioned Wang Chen about after. Wang Chen had replied that that blockhead's power was a bit strange but it wasn't anything worth worrying about. He could easily kill him. But that person who Wang Chen had said he could easily kill was actually able to hold back someone who could easily kill Wang Chen. In the midst of his shock, his instinct suddenly gave off a powerful warning, and he punched out without even thinking about it. Boom. Long Chen's silent fist was blocked. Xia Changfeng borrowed its power to float back. His guards also now reacted and came to his help, drawing their weapons and charging at Long Chen. Long Chen coldly snorted and formed a hand seal. A sphere of light quickly condensed between his hands. A terrifying temperature came from it that caused space to twist and warp. Quick. Retreat. Seeing that light, Xia Changfeng's expression changed completely and he hastily shouted out. But due to their broken eardrums from before, those guards were extremely slow to react. By the time they realized what Xia Changfeng was saying, Long Chen had already completed his preparations. The egg-sized ball of light in his hand shot out, leaving behind a streak of light. Even the air that it shot through became hot enough to cause space to twist. Boom. That ball of light shot straight into the middle of the group of guards and exploded, enveloping them in a terrifying scarlet blaze. Mournful screams rang out as that terrifying blaze spread to 30 meters, enveloping every single of the guards in its midst. That blaze was precisely Long Chen's pill flame. He had collected all the pill flame within his body and sent it out compressing it to such an extent that it formed a small ball of flame. That flame ball was called a pill blaze. Normally, only alchemists who had cultivated to pill master were capable of condensing such a pill blaze. That was because condensing such a pill blaze not only required an extremely powerful pill flame, but it also required an extremely powerful spiritual strength. That was because condensing it to such a point was extremely dangerous. The slightest slip could cause the flame to explode in your body. Long Chen not only had a powerful beast flame, but the power of his spiritual strength went without saying. Most importantly, with the pill god's memories in his soul, such usage of his pill flame was practically child's play. Although this was a basic technique for pill cultivators, its power was truly frightful. Once the temperature of the condensed pill flame was released, 
Even blood condensation experts would be unable to block it. A dozen guards were immediately burnt to a crisp. Pill flame was not the same as ordinary fire. It was basically inextinguishable. And there were also no pools of water around anyways. Those guards were only able to hold on for at most a couple of breaths time before dying. An unpleasant scorched smell filled the air. A dozen of Xia Chang Feng's competent subordinates were lost just like that. His face was ashen and his eyes seemed to spit flames. Long Chen's face was a bit pale now. That was the full force of his pill flame. And the aftermath of such a great consumption was definitely not small. Even to him. Those guards were all Xia Chang Feng's elite troops. The majority had all been at the mid-blood condensation realm or above. Long Chen could only use such a method to quickly defeat Chiring them. Although the sacrifice was large and he would no longer be able to use his pill flame for a while, it had all been worth it. Now there only remained Xia Chang Feng for him to deal with. He didn't have to worry about other people launching sneak attacks on him. Long Chen. Xia Chang Feng ground his teeth as he looked at Long Chen. What's up? Long Chen brushed the ashes off his clothes indifferently. I'll kill you. Xia Chang Feng's voice was trembling slightly. The anger inside him had already reached a critical level. That's just what I was going to say, said Long Chen. But before that, I want to know who placed those spiritual seeds in Chu Yao's body. You want to know? Haha, <laughs> you're dreaming, Xia Chang Feng sinisterly said. Did you really think you could kill me? I'll let you see just how ridiculous such a thought is. Boom. Blood key exploded from Xia Chang Feng's body. Powerful fluctuations surged from his body. Key waves rumbled hundreds of meters away, with Xia Chang Feng as the epicenter. Did you really think I was raised as a spoiled prince without learning any skills? Did you really think you are the only genius under the heavens? Today, I'll let an idiot like you learn just how stupid you are. The price of this lesson will be your life. At this time, Xia Chang Feng's whole aura had exploded out. Shocking key waves were rolling off his body and his blood key had been condensed to the pinnacle. His pressure made it difficult to breathe. You're at the peak of blood condensation. Long Chen nodded. As he had expected, Xia Chang Feng still had hidden cards. No wonder Long Chen had had a somewhat restless feeling throughout the day. He almost felt as if a great catastrophe was about to befall him. A peak blood condensation expert was the strongest opponent Long Chen had met up until this date. But no matter what, Long Chen was still willing to pay any price to kill Xia Chang Feng. It wasn't just because Xia Chang Feng was extremely likely to be a participant in the schemes against him. The main thing was that he had touched upon the most important thing in Long Chen's heart. Thinking of Chu Yao who was imprisoned alone within the Imperial Palace. Long Chen's killing intent sword. Die. Xia Chang Feng angrily roared. Stamping on the ground. He charged towards Long Chen. The ground he had stamped upon actually ended up caving into a huge hole. At the same time. A ruthless key completely locked Long Chen in place. That meant Xia Chang Feng was an expert who had tempered himself through life and death battles. Looking at the charging Xia Chang Feng, Long Chen tightly clenched his fists. His black hair slowly fluttered in the wind. His eyes were like two sharp blades. The cyclones in his body quickly revolved and he sent a punch out. Bang! A huge explosion rang out. Xia Chang Feng stumbled back. He had never thought that the current Long Chen would be even more powerful than when he had killed Wang Chang. His punch just now hadn't had the slightest effect at all. Long Chen's leg was already viciously kicking towards his stomach. Xia Chang Feng coldly snorted, pushing down his shock. His right hand became like a blade that ruthlessly slashed down at Long Chen's leg. With another bang, both of them retreated two steps. Xia Chang Feng was greatly shocked. Long Chen was truly a freak. Back in the heroic assembly house. He would have been able to slaughter him with just a single hand. But with every time he saw him, Long Chen's cultivation base would spring up at a shocking pace. Now he could actually fight on par with the peak blood condensation expert. This caused him intense fury, but it was also terrifying. If it continued like that, then sooner or later the freak would be someone he could no longer suppress. With an angry howl, Xia Chang Feng's blood key actually completely disappeared as he punched forward. His fist immediately coated with a bloody color. That one punch had actually collected his entire body's blood key. A bloody smell came from it. Blood gathering fist. When Long Chen saw Xia Chang Feng's punch, he felt his scalp turn numb. That was a fear that came from his innermost being. That terrifying fist definitely possessed a fatal danger to him. He hadn't expected Xia Chang Feng to actually use such a terrifying move so soon. His Feng Fu star quickly activated. A stream of spiritual ki flowed from his Feng Fu star to his Danshan. 
the twelve huge cyclones in his dantian immediately grew sharply and began to revolve even faster. The spiritual key within 300 meters of him was immediately absorbed by him. This was the first time he had used his full strength since entering the twelfth level of key condensation. Flamma cloud palm. With a low shout, he also sent a palm out. His flame-covered palm was sent crashing against Xia Changfeng's fist. Boom. The ground split apart and rocks shot everywhere. A dozens of meters wide huge crater formed where they collided. Long Chen felt his stomach flip over and over. Vomiting out blood. He was sent flying back. A painful scorching feeling came from his fist. A bloody color had appeared on his hand and was spreading up to his arm. His expression changed and he hastily swallowed an antitoxin pill. Xia Changfeng's fist had contained blood poison on it. From that one exchange, the poison had invaded Long Chen's hand. Just now Long Chen had instinctively used the flamma cloud palm, not the breaking wind fist. Now he couldn't help but rejoice his god. Luckily, his instincts truly were formidable. Due to having used the pill blaze just now, his flame energy was essentially all used up. The flamma cloud palm just now had used up the last trace of that flame energy he had managed to recover. But it was precisely because of that trace of flame energy that the majority of the blood poison had been blocked outside his body. If he had instead used the breaking wind fist, his power would have increased a bit, but he would be unable to move at this point. Despite having countered most of the blood poison and also having taken an antitoxin pill, his entire arm was still corroded by the blood poison. A numb and sour feeling came from it. While Long Chen was endlessly shaken, Xia Changfen was completely angered. Long Chen's full strength blow had been extremely terrifying. It had actually completely broken his arm. What caused the most fury in him just now would have been the flame energy that had been on Long Chen's fist. It had actually dispersed most of the blood poison which he had used his entire blood key to condense. A cold light flashed. A long blade appeared in Long Chen's left hand. A whistling sound rang out as he slashed at Xia Changfeng's head. Xia Changfeng was surprised. Not expecting Long Chen would be unaffected by the blood poison and attack so quickly. Even if he wanted to take a weapon out from his ring, it was already too late. He hastily rolled to the side. The sharp edge of the blade slashed right past Xia Changfeng's cheek, so close that he could even feel the coldness from it. He had only just managed to dodge one fatal attack when he saw Long Chen slash again at his throat. At this point, there was no retreat. No longer dodging, he sent a kick right towards Long Chen's dantian. The dantian was the location of the cultivation base. If it was damaged, a person would be permanently crippled. This was a strategy of relieving an attack by attacking the core. The attacker would have to give up attacking and switch to defending. It was very simple and effective. But what astounded him was that Long Chen actually seemed to not care about that kick and still kept slashing down. No, Long Chen's craziness had definitely surpassed his expectations. Long Chen would rather become a cripple and kill him than to let go of this opportunity. It was already too late for him to switch tactics. Endless dread filled him. Long Chen's eyes were icy cold without the slightest emotion. He was just like a cold-blooded god of slaughter. He didn't have the slightest misjivings. His blade ruthlessly slashed down. A slicing and banging sound rang out at the same time. Blood flew. A head rolled on the ground while a figure was sent flying away. Chapter 74 Caught in a Crisis Translator Born to be Xia Changfeng's kick had contained his full power. Long Chen was sent flying dozens of meters away and then continued rolling on the ground for another dozen meters before stopping. Looking from the fresh blood on his blade to the distant headless corpse that was Xia Changfeng, Long Chen took a deep breath. Xia Changfeng had truly had many hidden trump cards. That last blood gathering fist of his had definitely not been his strongest move, but by taking advantage of his shock, Long Chen had managed to find an opening. He naturally wouldn't give it up. Long Chen's cultivation base was not in his dantian but in his concealed Feng Fu star. So that kick hadn't caused any misjivings for Long Chen. Even if he had to risk his life in exchange, he would still have cut him down. He had always been feeling extremely restless today as if something catastrophic was always about to happen. Now he had an extremely strange feeling in his heart. It was a very vague feeling of danger that seemed to be there and not there. That feeling had been there from the beginning. A kind of indescribable feeling. Just like that, Xia Changfen had ended up dying, but that kick of his when facing death had still contained his entire cultivation base's power. When it had landed on Long Chen's stomach, the terrifying energy within it had caused Long Chen's blood to wildly surge. His internal organs were greatly shaken and almost burst apart. He hastily swallowed an organ-nourishing pill and suppressed his wounds. He thanked his luck for this win. 
Xia Changfen had been extremely powerful. If Xia Changfen had truly used his full strength, it really would have been difficult to say just who would have died. And even if he was defeated, the price would definitely not have been small. It definitely wouldn't have been as simple as the present. His luck had truly played an important factor. Taking a deep breath, the blood poison on his hand was already being suppressed by medicinal energy and was slowly recovering. All the medicinal pills Long Chen kept on his body were all life-saving pills. They were all higher grade, which allowed for extremely fast recovery. That was the capital a pill cultivator possessed. He walked over to Xia Changfeng's corpse and took away his spatial ring. However, now still wasn't the time to examine his harvest. Not even glancing at that glassy-eyed severed head, Long Chen immediately rushed to Wild's battlefield. The current Wild was shouting to his heart's content. The battle axe in his hand whistled through the air, and he was becoming more and more valiant as he fought. The battle axe weaved deftly throughout the air. Although there was no technique, its power was shockingly great. Wang Mang was now using both hands to wield his broadsword as he fought all out against Wild. It appeared fate had destined Xia Changfeng to die. He had a powerful subordinate like Wang Mang, but because his head had become a bit heated, he was fighting with Wild using only his brute strength. If he actually used his full repertoire of techniques and skills, he would have easily defeated Wild. But warriors who had relied purely on strength to fight might simply have incomprehensible minds. With another intense collision, Wang Mang was sent flying back. From the very start, he was unable to withstand the seemingly infinite power of Wild. Wang Mang was no longer as furious as he was at the beginning. Instead, he was absolutely shocked. He had used his powerful strength to defeat Turing countless powerful enemies. But today his strength had completely failed him, and he was pushed back over and over. As he was staring at Wild with a complicated expression, he was unaware that another person had appeared behind him. Silently drawing his blade, Long Chen cut it right across his neck. Wang Mang suddenly felt as if he was flying through the air. His first reaction was that he didn't remember jumping, but when he looked down, he saw that his body was still on the ground just like before. That was his last thought before his mind sunk into darkness. When Wild saw that Long Chen could behead Wang Mang in a single blow, fear appeared in his eyes. The mountain splitting battle axe in his hand fell to the ground. Looking at Wild's terrified expression as he looked at Wang Mang's corpse, Long Chen knew that this reaction was normal, as this was the first time Wild had seen a person being killed. Wild, this is cruelty of reality. If we want to continue living, they had to definitely die. Sighed Long Chen. Brother Long, I'm fine. Wild shook his head. As long as Brother Long believes they must die, they must die. Long Chen bitterly smiled. Talking sense to Wild was essentially useless. But Wild's trust in him truly did touch him greatly. We should leave quickly but just as Long Chen was about to bring Wild away, he had always been feeling that something was wrong throughout the entire day. His body suddenly tightened. It was as if he was being stared at by a giant, ancient beast. A powerful aura of death immediately enveloped him, causing him to feel as if he were encased in ice. Slowly turning his head, he saw a person indifferently looking back at him on top of a distant mountain cliff. His pupils immediately shrunk. He finally understood the reason for his fear. It hadn't been because of Xia Changfeng, but because of that person. That person lightly clapped a couple of times and exclaimed in admiration. With just a cultivation base of key condensation, you were able to continuously kill blood condensation experts. And one of them was actually at the peak of blood condensation. Haha, <laughs> I have no choice but to admit that you, Long Chen, are truly a genius. You are worthy of being Long Shiang Xiao's son. That voice was soft and feminine. The voice of Mark was Ying. He was standing high on a cliff, looking down on Long Chen arrogantly. He was just like a leopard stalking his prey. Long Chen's heart tightened. No wonder he had been continuously feeling as if the catastrophe was just one step away. He had actually caught the attention of Marquis Ying. Obviously, Marquis Ying had long since arrived. He had merely been concealing himself until he had killed Xia Changfeng. A trap. Long Chen immediately realized that Marquis Ying had come to kill him. Did the fourth prince send you here? Long Chen kicked the broadsword on the ground into his hand. That was Wang Mang's weapon. Such a heavy weapon gave him a slight sense of security. Marquis Ying was surprised, but immediately indifferently laughed. What do you think? Long Chen shook his head and sighed. I really was stupid to think I was clever. I actually didn't realize just how well calculated the fourth prince's words were. Why are you certain it was the fourth prince who sent me here and not just me coming of my own volition? You wouldn't come here just because of that small, 
matter from last time to take your anger out on me. If you did, then you wouldn't be Marquis Ying. Waiting patiently is your strongest suit. Otherwise, you would have long since been slaughtered by my father. Long Chen's voice was completely steady. Many scenes began to run through his head. From Marquis Ying's words, he was now certain that the fourth prince wanted him dead. If he assumed that it was the fourth prince who had been abusing the Long family from the start, then he had truly schemed deeply to get him to assassinate Xia Changfeng. First, back at the auction, he had intentionally allowed him to recognize the man who had assassinated Li Hao. That man might be one of the crown prince's guards on the surface, but he must definitely be one of the fourth prince's men. He had done this in order to draw Long Chen's hatred onto the crown prince. And then when he went to visit Chu Yao, he ended up helping him, by telling him that he had investigated the Long family's matter and acting like he didn't dare say anything. He had stealthily and vaguely pointed to the hidden enemy being the crown prince. Originally, Long Chen had only half believed him, but then when the fourth prince had brought up the departure of Xia Changfeng and what path he would be taking, he had immediately brought Long Chen's line of thinking to there. Back then, Long Chen had considered the possibility that he had been planning on borrowing Xia Changfeng to kill him, but for Chu Yao, he was willing to jump in even if it was a trap. If his plan had been for Xia Changfeng to kill him, then the worst case scenario would be for him to flee to the Alchemist Guild and seek shelter under Grand Master Yun Qi. Then no one would dare attack him. But obviously, the fourth prince wasn't so stupid, as that would have just made himself his enemy. Now that Marquis Ying had appeared, Long Chen realized he had been thinking too simply back then. He had clearly underestimated the fourth prince's methods. Long Chen had no choice but to admit that he had been duped. The fourth prince truly was skilled to be able to muddy his thoughts and be able to trick him like this. Long Chen, looking at the current you, it's just like I'm looking at a younger Long Shiang Xiao. You have the same kind of spirit and smarts. Back when I lost to your father, I considered it the greatest disgrace of my life. And even after all these years, I've never had a chance to get revenge. But now I'm ready to openly challenge him again. However, before that, I should prepare a gift. What do you think his expression will be like when I give him his son's head? Haha, <laughs> I trust that it will definitely be marvelous. Marquis Ying laughed, but his expression was so sinister it sent shivers down his body. I think the greatest disgrace of all is that you are considered on the same level of fame as my father. You aren't sure of beating him, so you actually want to use such an atrocious method. In my father's eyes, you will forever be a loser. The current you doesn't even have the qualifications to challenge him. Long Chen shook his head with pity. Marquis Ying's indifferent expression finally changed to become incomparably malevolent and sinister. Long Chen's words had pierced the soul sore point in his heart. Back when he was young, he had been an extremely talented genius with many accomplishments. But unfortunately, he was born at the wrong time. Long Shiang Xiao was in the same generation as him. He had challenged Long Shiang Xiao several times, all ending in defaturing in the last fight. He had actually lost a finger to Long Shiang Xiao. Ever since then, Marquis Ying had begun to bitterly cultivate. He also became more and more dark and feminine. Although he later also advanced to the Tendon Transformation Realm to become one of Phoenix Cry's top three experts, he could never forget the crushing defeats he had suffered to Long Shiang Xiao. Once he had reached the peak of the Mid Tendon Transformation Realm, he had suddenly found out that his severed finger had badly damaged him and he was unable of stepping into the late Tendon Transformation Realm. His hatred of Long Shiang Xiao grew even greater. Now he had coincidentally obtained the Flesh Bone Restoration Pill and had regenerated his finger. That had allowed him to finally break through to the seventh vestige of Tendon Transformation, entering its late stage. That was why the current Marquis Ying was filled with high spirits. He decided that this time he would definitely kill Long Shiang Xiao, wiping away his shame. But although he had advanced to the late Tendon Transformation Realm, Long Shiang Xiao was his heart devil, and he was unsure of victory. Luckily, he now had a chance to kill Long Chen. If he used Long Chen's head to infuriate Long Shiang Xiao, his chances of victory would definitely rise. Now Long Chen had used just a single sentence to point out his goal, causing him to be enraged out of humiliation. He was just like a hypocrite whose camouflage was torn off by others. Killing intent overflowed from his eyes. Did I touch on a sore spot? Are you too ashamed to show your face? Then, just crush your head into the cliff and everything will be resolved, advised Long Chen. Although his words were light, his grip on the broadsword tightened. At the same time, his cyclone slowly revolved and all his nerves were stretched tight. You fucking brat, go die. 
Marquis Ying angrily roared, and a cold lightning-like light appeared over half the sky. By the time Long Chen sensed anything, he was appalled to find that Marquis Ying had already arrived right in front of him with a sword pressed against his throat. Chapter 75 Fighting Against Marquis Ying Translator Born to be although Long Chen had long since been on guard against him, he had still never thought that Marquis Ying's speed was so terrifying. As soon as he just barely moved, he had already arrived in front of him, but he had already prepared himself for this. If Marquis Ying wasn't strong, how could he possibly be listed alongside his father as one of the Empire's top three experts? Long Chen's heart was completely calm as he watched the sword slash towards his neck. Any fear was put away. He entered a special kind of state, not paying the slightest attention to Marquis Ying's sword. His power exploded as he slashed the broadsword in his hands at Marquis Ying's waist. The broadsword was exceptionally heavy, but now that he had 12 cyclones, his physical strength had reached an inconceivable level. It was not any problem to Long Chen. Wind whistled. The current Long Chen no longer dared to hold anything back, slashing with that broadsword with his full strength. Even space seemed to be cut apart. Marquis Ying clearly had not expected that Long Chen would be so unafraid of death. This was clearly an attack that would cause both sides to suffer, but despite it being such a basic method, it caused his attack to completely collapse. The sword in his hand was only three feet long, a standard sword length, but Long Chen's broadsword was seven feet long. If their attacks continued like this, then the result would be that while his sword would manage to slash through Long Chen's throat, Long Chen's broadsword would also cut his body apart. No matter how conceited he was, he would never dare use his body to block Long Chen's broadsword. Even a tendon transformation expert like him was unable to do that. He had no choice but to give up his attack. Turning his body, he floated back, dodging the sword by just a fraction of an inch. Although Long Chen seemed as if he was planning on bringing Marquis Ying down even at the cost of his own life, the truth was that he was sure that if he had dodged instead, Marquis Ying would have continued to press his advantage. If he let Marquis Ying attack him consecutively, he would just be quickening his defaturing seeing Marquis Ying retreat. Long Chen roared, his voice like thunder. His broadsword slash suddenly stopped and became a stab straight towards Marquis Ying's stomach. Marquis Ying had only just dodged when he saw Long Chen suddenly change attacks. His expression couldn't help but change slightly. After all, that broadsword was heavy to an astonishing level. Marquis Ying had already noticed that, and that was why he didn't dare take it head on. But such a shockingly heavy broadsword was controlled so easily by Long Chen. He was even capable of switching attacks in the middle of his movements. That meant Long Chen's physical strength had already reached a terrifying level. HMPH. It's just brute force. Marquis Ying coldly snorted. His sword streaked through the air and heavily stabbed against Long Chen's broadsword. Sparks shot everywhere. Long Chen was shocked that his full strength attack was pushed to the side by Marquis Ying's sword causing his sword to only hit air as it went past Marquis Ying's body. More importantly, he had used so much force that with the addition of Marquis Ying's sword stab, Long Chen's body was also forced forward along with his broadsword. Long Chen had only just realized what a terrible situation he was in when Marquis Ying's sword shot out as fast as lightning, aiming right for a vital point on his stomach. Relying on his spirit's battle experience, he instinctively twisted. Marquis Ying's speed was too quick for him to dodge. His sword stabbed a bloody hole in his stomach. Luckily, Long Chen's twisting had caused him to miss a vital point. But before Long Chen could even take a breath, Marquis Ying's second slash was already coming, this time for his throat. Long Chen's heart was wildly thumping. This was what a tendon transformation expert was? There was no way to fight on par with him. In front of Marquis Ying, Long Chen was like a child without the slightest ability to retaliate. The speed of Marquis Ying's sword was inconceivable. It was already too late for him to dodge. He could only watch with his eyes opened as it approached his throat. Other than the icy cold sword that was approaching, the only other thing in his eyes was Marquis Ying whose expression was filled with ridicule and resentment. This was the first time Long Chen felt death being so close. Fuck off. A golden light flew by. Due to the wind revolving around it, a sharp whistling sound rang out as it cut the air apart. Just as Marquis Ying's sword had been about to pierce Long Chen's throat, a huge golden axe viciously chopped down at Marquis Ying. Wild's reactions had been a bit slow. Seeing the two of them talking and then suddenly start fighting, he hadn't even reacted until he saw that Long Chen's life was about to be lost. In a great hurry, he had charged forward, swinging down his axe with his full strength. Marquis Ying had been just about to kill Long Chen, 
Suddenly feeling his back turn cold and an intense mortal danger, although he was a bit unwilling, he had no choice but to give up his killing attack on Long Chen and swing his sword up to meet Wilde's battle axe. Wilde was forced back dozens of meters and looked in shock at Mark Wis Ying. Mark Wis Ying also didn't have an easy time as he was shaken back several meters. His sword blow just now had used a technique to shift the majority of the power away. However, he was still forced back. Even his arm was somewhat numb. He was actually greatly shaken by this. Wilde was practically a magical beast in human form. Having his life saved, Long Chen quickly whispered a few things to Wilde, ending with, Wilde, he's very difficult to deal with, we'll have to stake our lives, stake your lives. Marquis Ying rubbed his somewhat numb arm and sneered, with just your superficial tricks and that brute force, you two might be very powerful compared to others, but in front of a tendon transformation expert like me, neither of you have the slightest chance. Long Chen pointed his sword at Marquis Ying. Whether or not we have a chance is something we'll only know after trying. Marquis Ying didn't seem to be in a rush to kill them. He stabbed his sword into the ground like a crotch. He began to indifferently speak. Although I can't see through your cultivation basis, there's not the slightest trace of blood key coming from your bodies. That means you are both in key condensation. As a present I'll be sending to your father. I'll do you a favor and tell you just how great the difference is between us. At key condensation. You absorb heaven and earth's spiritual key into your own body, allowing you to use heaven and earth's power for your own. What you cultivate is key. At blood condensation, you use heaven and earth's spiritual key to purify your blood. It allows you to strengthen your body. What you cultivate is physical power. Key and physical strength add together to release a great strength. However, it is only additive. Once you reach tendon transformation, your body's physical strength explodes and key nourishes your soul. Your key and physical body merge together perfectly. However, at tendon transformation, the might produced by key and body is no longer additive, but multiplicative. If blood condensation's combat level is 10 plus 10, then tendon transformation's combat level is 10 times 10. Long Chen's core was shaken greatly. He knew Marquis Ying wasn't telling them this information to be nice. He was telling them just how great the difference between them was in order to make them give up and despair. Although he knew that, Long Chen's heart was still horrified. If what he said was really true, then they really wouldn't stand a chance. And even ignoring his power, just Mark Wis Ying's strange movements and his speed which was fast as lightning were enough to shock him. This was an absolutely hopeless situation. No wonder the fourth prince had dared to scheme against him. Long Chen was to kill Xia Changfang, and then Mark Wis Ying would then kill him. It was a truly profound scheme. Wild obviously wasn't thinking as much as Long Chen. He only glared straight at Mark Wis Ying. Brother Long, what is he saying? Additive and multiplicative? What's key condensation and blood condensation? Don't bother with what he says. Remember what I told you just now, replied Long Chen quietly. Mark Wis Ying indifferently looked at Long Chen. What? You really still want to struggle at this point? Do you doubt what I just said? Long Chen raised his sword at him and sneered. Did you think I wouldn't notice that you're wearing a photographic jade on your chest? You just want to take a picture of my despair before death for my father, right? He had been too nervous before, but now he noticed there was a strange jade on his chest. That jade had many curving lines on it. Although Long Chen had never studied inscription arts, he had heard of photographic jades. The inscriptions on them allowed them to record pictures or even short videos. Haha, <laughs> I really never expected to be seen through by you. How boring. Mark Wis Ying lightly stroked the jade. I really did want to send the full image as the gift. First, I'll send your head to him. Then, I'll show him the image of your deathbed struggle. Only then can I relieve the hatred I've repressed for so many years. Long Chen laughed. What a shady move. You really are a contemptible little man. A half man half woman sissy. You only use these disdainful moves. My father could sever your finger. Today I'll show you that I can sever your head. He suddenly stamped his foot. Even the land trembled with him as his shot forward like a wild gale, slashing his sword at Mark Wis Ying. HMPH, ignorant kid, today I'll let you see just how terrifying it is when Qi merges with your body. Mark Wis Ying coldly snorted and his robes began to float without any wind. Green veins began to bulge on his skin like many swimming snakes. That was a specific attribute of the tendon transformation realm. When his entire body was covered in green veins, his aura suddenly exploded and terrifying energy shot out everywhere. The space around him was even twisted and warped. Seeing this, Long Chen gritted his teeth. No matter how powerful Mark Wis Ying was, he had to do his utmost to fight. 
Otherwise, he definitely wouldn't have a good death. He was afraid of death. If he really did die, what would happen to his mother? What would happen to Chu Yao? What about his arrangement with Men Qi? He couldn't die. Only by going all out and risking his life would there even be the slightest chance of him surviving. His entire energy gathered into the broadsword. Long Chen placed aside his fear and bravely charged into the face of death. Without realizing it, his Feng Fu star began to slowly circulate. But after it had only half circulated, it seemed as if some sort of energy was lacking and it returned to calm. Die. He courageously charged forward. His sword shook the heavens as he used his full force to bring it slashing down. Chapter 76 The Terrifying Marquis Ying Translator Born to be Marquis Ying coldly smiled both mockingly and disdainfully. His hand, which was now covered with bulging veins, brandished his sword, causing it to slice through space. Boom! Terrifying waves of ki surged out violently, causing the entire mountain valley to tremble. Long Chen felt as if he had been smashed by a huge mountain. He was sent tumbling through the air, vomiting out blood. He rolled dozens of meters and spat out another mouthful of blood. His insides felt as if they were on fire. Long Chen's face was covered with shock and terror. Marquis Ying's words from before had not just been to frighten him. They had been the truth. When Qi and physical power superimposed, the strength that could be unleashed was truly enough to cause a person to despair. Bastard. Wild let out an angry roar. His axe smashed down right after Long Chen was sent flying. But Marquis Ying's sword was as quick as lightning, quickly striking against Wilde's battle axe. Wilde was sent flying back like a skipping stone, tumbling through the air several times before heavily landing on the ground. But while Wilde was sent back flying further than Long Chen, he didn't spit out any blood. That surprised Marquis Ying. Now you two should be convinced. In front of true strength, all your struggles are futile. Give up. Marquis Ying didn't chase after them to attack. He stood in his original position like an emperor, coldly looking down on them, supporting himself with the broadsword to struggle back up. Long Chen shook his head, blood staining his mouth. Giving up midway isn't my style. I still haven't chopped off your head yet either. Marquis Ying coldly looked back at Long Chen. His anger suddenly turned into laughter. Haha, <laughs> you truly are Long Shiang san I admire that toughness. I hope once I crush every single bone in your body you can still stay as tough. Kid. Go repent in the underworld. After speaking, his body suddenly moved. Long Chen was shocked to realize that he was looking at an afterimage. Marquis Ying's speed was inconceivable, and he arrived in front of Long Chen in an instant, slashing with his sword. Seeing Marquis Ying's attack, Long Chen once again didn't bother with defending, instead also sending a slash out at Marquis Ying. This method of giving up defense to take one's enemy down as well wasn't really a method. It was a technique that could only be used when all else was useless. In terms of speed, Long Chen was unable to compare to Marquis Ying. And in terms of power, he was also not his match. All he could rely on was the length of his broadsword. He could only use his courage and boldness to fight against him. Although such a technique was extremely dangerous, it would at least allow him to buy some time. As expected, Marquis Ying was incapable of accepting such an exchange where he would also be heavily injured just to kill him. He recalled his sword to defend, looking for another opportunity to attack. At this time, Wild also charged over, hacking down with his axe. It seemed that the previous blow hadn't harmed him at all. His physical body truly was so frighteningly sturdy. Long Chen was gratified to see that Wild seemed to suddenly become smart. He had learned from Long Chen to ignore Marquis Ying's sword and attack with his life on the line. Consecutive blows echoed throughout the valley. The very land trembled with each exchange. With Long Chen and Wild working together and gambling their lives, Marquis Ying was actually unable to display his abilities and was forcibly blocked by the two of them. Noveloon.com He had a definite superiority over them in terms of both power and speed. But Long Chen and Wild's attacks were absolutely insane, risking their lives over and over again. They didn't care about any of his blows striking them, only using their bodies to receive his attacks. However, they risked their lives to strike fatal blows on him. Marquis Ying's face turned green from anger. There were several times when he felt an urge to continue his attack while disregarding their blows in order to kill them, but he still continued to patiently endure. Firstly, Long Chen and Wild's strength were too great. If he were to take a direct hit from them, that could be a fatal blow, a slight miscalculation or accident and it wouldn't be just exchanging blows but exchanging lives. Secondly, he possessed the absolute advantage. Handling Long Chen and Wild was just a matter of time. There was no need for him to take any reckless risks. 
and it was precisely because Long Chen had seen through Mark Wish Ying's thinking that he dared to do as he did. After all, this kind of exchange was an absolute last resort. If he didn't risk his life fighting back, he would just die immediately. Weapons clashed and flew. An hour passed in just the blink of an eye. Long Chen was alarmed to realize that his physical strength was starting to fade. The broadsword in his hands began to feel heavier and heavier, and Wilde wasn't much better off. His axe was no longer as quick and violent as before. He had obviously also reached his limit. Seeing an icy smile appeared on Marquis Ying's face, Long Chen's heart grew cold. Marquis Ying was doing this to capture them alive. He would continue to completely exhaust them so that he could torture them as much as he liked later. Long Chen narrowed his eyes. If you want my life, then we'll have to see if you have the qualifications or not. Marquis Ying smiled inside when he saw that Long Chen and Wilde's power were weakening and their attacks becoming slower. Suddenly, Long Chen swung his broadsword too hard. Due to a lack of energy, he stumbled forward a step along with the sword. That one step immediately revealed a huge opening. Almost by reflex, Marquis Ying didn't even think. Dodging Wilde's axe, his sword directly slashed towards Long Chen's waist. Obviously, Long Chen's guess was right. Marquis Ying was planning on keeping them barely alive. Otherwise, that sword would be going straight for his heart. A cold glimmer shined in Long Chen's eyes. Suddenly, his Feng Fu star was activated to its full power. All his power flowed straight into his Danshan. The 12 cyclones that were already 300 meters wide immediately grew to 10 times the size. They quickly revolved, and the spiritual key within 50 kilometers was immediately sucked dry. Whether I can succeed or not, I have to try. Long Chen prayed inside. His 12 cyclones all revolved, causing all that spiritual key to condense into a cord that flowed through the Li Yao point, merged into the Wei Ming point, and at the end rushed through the Qi point to enter the Leo Gong point. When his spiritual key flowed into the first point, that acupuncture point acted like a floodgate that was forced open. After his spiritual key went through that gate, it somehow began to flow faster, rushing into the next point with an even greater force. Once the spiritual key had finished through all the layers of superposition and entered the final Leo Gong point in his hand, Long Chen suddenly felt intense pain coming from that acupuncture point. Crap, my meridians can't handle this. As soon as he felt that pain around his Leo Gong point, he realized the surrounding meridians were also starting to shudder, unable to handle the rushing of the spiritual key. Hold for me, Long Chen angrily roared. He could no longer care too much about that. He controlled it so only a strand of that energy flowed out of the Leo Gong point. Without even thinking about it, he injected that strand of energy into his broadsword. The broadsword immediately began to shake and rumble. Just as Marquis Ying's sword was about to pierce into Long Chen's waist, he suddenly felt his heart jump and all his hair stood on end. Relying on his many years of battle experience, he instinctively gave up on his attack and hastily retreated. But even as he began to retreat, the broadsword in Long Chen's hand was already raised. The seven-foot-long broadsword emitted a strange light and seemed to possess an aura of endless death as it descended upon Marquis Ying. Split the heavens. Marquis Ying was completely terrified as he looked up at that sword. That sword had somehow managed to lock him in place. A small key condensation beginner was actually able to use his key to lock a tendon transformation expert two realms above him in place. That was absolutely crazy. Normally. Such a lock could only occur when the stronger expert attacked the weaker one. If two opponents were on the same level, it was extremely difficult for one to lock the other in place. For an insignificant key condensation newbie to lock down a tendon transformation expert was a joke. However, such a thing actually now happened to Marquis Ying. But Marquis Ying quickly recovered from his shock, sensing the scent of death drawing near him. The sword in Long Chen's hand held a strange shine. It was just like a divinity's blade mercilessly slashing down, wave-breaking slash, seeing that sword slash down, Marquis Ying shouted, now was not the time to be shocked by Long Chen's lock, all the green veins on his body sharply grew until it was like vines which were wriggling right under his skin, his aura once more grew to a new level as he also slashed out, key waves surged out dozens of meters, this wave-breaking slash was one of Marquis Ying's ultimate techniques, and it was an earth-class battle skill, boom, the moment Long Chen's broadsword met Marquis Ying's sword, heaven and earth both turned still for a moment. Only then did an enormous explosion ring out. Three figures were sent flying at the same time. The terrifying energy completely destroyed their original battlefield. A huge crater almost 30 meters wide appeared where they had collided. 
Long Chen felt as if his entire body were about to fall apart from exhaustion. His right hand was hurting in particular. According to common sense, with his current meridian widths, he was still unable to display split the heavens. But despite that, he had forcibly used it just now. This had completely broken down his meridians surrounding the Leo Gong point. But he had also finally learned just how terrifying split the heavens was. He had actually been lucky at that final moment, as he had only used a strand of split the heavens energy. He hadn't dared to use the rest of that energy. If he had used the full force of that battle skill, perhaps all his meridians would have completely been blown apart and he would truly become a cripple. But despite using just a strand of that energy, his hand's meridians were completely ravaged. Other than a lingering fear, Long Chen also felt a burst of excitement. It was already so powerful despite that he had only used just a strand of its power. Just what class of battle skill had split the heavens reached? You really are worthy of being Long Shiang Xiao's son. Good. Very good. Ha 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 ha. A burst of laughter rang out. The dust slowly scattered and Mark Wis Ying appeared from within. But the current Mark Wis Ying appeared extremely miserable. His clean and tidy clothes had become unbearably tattered. There was a large wound in the middle of his stomach from which blood slowly flowed out. Of the sword in his hand, only the hilt remained now. That exchange just now had completely destroyed the blade. Long Chen's pupils shrunk. Although Mark Wis Ying was extremely destitute now, his aura hadn't dropped much at all. That meant Mark Wis Ying combat ability hadn't dropped either. Using one hand, he tore off his tattered clothes, revealing his wound and also a soft armor. That armor was golden in color. It appeared extremely flexible and strong. However, a large hole had been split open on it due to Long Chen's broadsword. What a powerful battle skill. If I hadn't had this golden silk armor, I really would have died. Looking down at his wound, Marquis Ying icily said, I'll give you a chance. If you hand over that battle skill, I'll give you two a quick death. Long Chen switched the broadsword into his left hand. His right hand was already half crippled and was unable to hold it anymore. He forced himself up and coldly laughed. And what if I say no? Long Chen, you better think this through. Death isn't scary. Living a life worse than death is the most painful and I just happened to have some skill in that area. I'd advise you not to regret anything, said Mark Wis Ying icily. I, Long Chen, have never done anything I've regretted. Long Chen glanced at him and then stealthily cast a meaningful glance at Wild. Long Chen didn't dare be too obvious. After glancing at Wild, Long Chen slowly raised his sword and sneered. Ying Xiao, that move just now was just a testing blow. Now that I've tested it, I'll take your dog sheet life. After saying that, he stabbed the sword into the ground. At the same time, waves of ki exploded out and raised up all the dust into the air. HMPH. Just let me see how capable you are. Marquis Ying grimly laughed. Rubbing his ring, another sword appeared in his hand, and he raised it in front of him. But when the dust settled, the guarded Marquis Ying realized that Long Chen had already disappeared, only leaving behind the foolish wild standing there. Marquis Ying's expression changed. He hastily looked up to see that Long Chen had already fled several hundred meters into the mountains. Chapter 77 Pursuit Deep in the Forest Translator Born to be Marquis Ying's expression changed and he hastily looked up, only to see that Long Chen had already fled hundreds of meters deeper into the mountains. Fuck. For the reserved and elegant Marquis Ying, that was the first time he had shouted out such a vulgar word. His eyes were spitting flames. He had been fooled. So the truth was that Long Chen had noticed that his full strength attack was actually not enough to incapacitate him and that he was simply not a match for a tendon transformation expert. After saying a couple of ruthless words, he had stabbed his sword into the ground to fill the air with dust and then immediately fled. Perhaps fleeing was actually the most valuable combat skill to have. However, when Long Chen noticed that Wild hadn't fled with him and was instead just foolishly standing in his original spot, he almost coughed up blood in anger. He had purposely given him a glance just now to tell him that there would be a chance to flee. He hadn't expected him to not react and just stand there. But since he had already fled now, he absolutely could not return. Marquis Ying's target was him. As long as he fled, Wilde should be safe. As he expected, he had only gone several hundred meters before Marquis Ying angrily roared and started charging after him. Stop. Suddenly, Wilde angrily roared and a red light started to come from his skin. Violent energy soared from his body. He was just like a wild ancient beast that had been awakened. Just as Marquis Ying was about to chase after Long Chen, a huge battle axe whistled over at him, causing his heart to tremble. What surprised him was that Wild's attack was suddenly much stronger than before. 
Even before the axe landed, just the wind from it alone was enough to make it hard for him to breath. The power behind his attack had at least doubled. Boom. Marquis Ying didn't take it head on. The new sword in his hand wasn't an equal to his old sword, so he didn't dare meet that blow. The result was that Wild's axe ruthlessly smashed into the ground. His terrifying energy caused the whole valley to shake. Broken rocks shot out everywhere and a shockingly huge crater appeared. Brother Long, quickly run. I'll block him. Seeing his attack missed, he once more sent his axe smashing at Marquis Ying. The fleeing Long Chen was both shocked, angered, and moved. He was shocked that Wild would be able to explode with such terrifying strength. He was furious because there was no point in blocking him. Long Chen wanted Marquis Ying to chase after him. He was also moved that Wilde would actually use his own life to try to protect him. Although Wilde was a bit naive, maybe even flat out dumb, he had complete and total trust in Long Chen. He was even willing to give up his own life for him. Long Chen had an urge to both cry and curse. He was extremely worried, but he also didn't dare to stop running. That would simply be telling Marquis Ying that he wouldn't abandon Wilde, thus, revealing his weak spot. Then, both of them would die. Originally. He had been planning on drawing away Marquis Ying and having Wilde flee in a different direction. But the result was that Wilde hadn't understood the slightest bit of Long Chen's intentions. Boom. Marquis Ying dodged Wilde three more times. At this time, Wilde's strength was growing stupendously. That last attack had been so powerful that he hadn't been able to dodge. Blocking with his sword, he was forced back five steps. Die. Marquis Ying raged. Today, he had been repeatedly thwarted from killing Long Chen. A Grand Tendon Transformation expert like him had actually been this helpless in front of two insignificant key condensation rookies. More importantly, Long Chen's final attack just now had given him a somewhat heavy internal injury. Although he made himself appear fine, the truth was that he was merely suppressing the injury. That was why he didn't want to use any of his power to get past Wild, who was blocking him. That would end up making his internal injury worse but he was becoming increasingly anxious as he saw Long Chen flee further and further away. If he couldn't throw off this giant fellow, then Long Chen really would escape. That was something completely unacceptable. His veins bulged again as he also sent a slash out at Wilde's attack. Wilde suddenly felt an unstoppable force push him back. He only managed to stabilize himself after almost 10 meters. Although Marquis Ying didn't specialize in power. The sharp increase in strength after entering the tendon transformation realm was simply too great. He managed to force Wild back, but Marquis Ying also wasn't well off. His stomach was aching dully. That was the result of provoking his internal injury. Long Chen's last attack had not only shaken his internal organs, but even his danshan had been somewhat jolted. That led to his spiritual key being much more sluggish. In the process of forcing Wild back, he had almost been unable to continue suppressing his injury. Immediately after forcing Wild back, he went to go chase after Long Chen. Long Chen was his main target. You're not going anywhere. Marquis Ying almost went mad with rage. Wild actually hadn't even received an injury despite being blown back and was now charging at him again. Wild truly was a magical beast in human form. His physical body had reached an absolutely frightening level. Just by relying on his physical strength, he had actually managed to forcefully take a tendon transformation expert's attack. Being unable to throw off Wild, Marquis Ying's eyes turned icy cold and he once more used his sword to block Wild's battle axe. He then snaked his sword through an opening to stab at Wild's stomach. Marquis Ying had obviously been infuriated and was willing to kill to get away from this hindrance. But when his sword struck Wild's skin, it was as if he had struck a hard surface. His sword slipped and his full strength blow immediately lost over half its power. The sword still managed to pierce through Wild's skin. However, it only managed to get two inches in before being unable to go any further. It was unable to pierce through Wilde's bones. Marquis Ying was greatly shocked, as that was the first time such a thing had happened. Even a magical beast's body would be easily pierced through with his cultivation base. But he was apparently unable to do the same to Wilde. Roar. Wilde didn't even seem to notice the wound, viciously smashing down his battle axe on Marquis Ying. He had attacked Wilde twice now without being able to give Wilde a true injury. And now that Wilde was attacking him, he was held back from chasing after Long Chen again. At this time, he glanced into the distance and couldn't help being worried. Long Chen had already fled over five miles. He was just about to enter a thick forest. If he really did enter that forest, then by relying on the coverage, he would have an unacceptably high chance of getting away. But Wilde continued to firmly block his way. 
Grinding his teeth, he raised his sword with both hands and a scarlet flame color appeared over it. Cliff breaking slash. Wild's battle axe went flying away while he himself was sent tumbling back dozens of meters. He spat out a mouthful of blood, and at the same time, the strange red light from his body faded. His aura sharply fell. Marquis Ying had actually been so pressed for time that he had used an Earth-class battle skill. He had managed to send Wild flying, but Wild only spat out a single mouthful of blood. On the other hand, that one attack caused his internal injury to almost flare out of control. He hastily took out a healing pill from his ring. That was a precious high-grade healing pill that he had collected many years ago. For his cultivation base, middle-grade or lower medicinal pills were basically without any effect, while high-grade medicinal pills were extremely rare. So swallowing that medicinal pill now truly caused him a heartache. Marquis Ying glanced at Wild who was lying on the ground and hesitated for a moment. He really wanted to kill Wild, as he was practically a monster. He would definitely be terrifying once he matured. But then looking at Long Chen who was on the eve of hiding in the forest, Marquis Ying gritted his teeth. Weighing his options, he still decided to ignore Wild and chased directly after Long Chen. Wild was extremely worried when he saw Marquis Ying go straight after Long Chen. He crawled back up to give chase as well, but he only managed to take two steps before he felt the world spinning around him. Wild fell on his butt. His face was completely pale and he couldn't stop his hands from shivering. That was a sign that he had overdrafted his strength. Hatefully punching the ground, he could only watch as Marquis Ying's figure faded deep into the valley. Long Chen had kept a watch over their battle as he had fled. Seeing Wild unwaveringly blocked Marquis Ying had caused him to panic. If Wild really did enrage Marquis Ying, then he might not take Long Chen into consideration and just kill Wild. If that happened, Long Chen would regret it for a lifetime. But according to his understanding of Marquis Ying, he wasn't the type of person to lose his cool because of anger. When he was just about to enter the forest, he saw Marquis Ying ignore Wild to chase after him, causing him to finally feel some reliefs. He then focused his full strength on running. Entering the forest, everything suddenly became quiet. Countless huge trees reached for the sky, making it so that it was extremely difficult for any sunlight to get through. Long Chen quickly adapted to the lighting and charged forward, doing his best not to step on any vegetation. Doing so would leave behind obvious tracks. Long Chen instead did his best to land on rocks or perhaps overturn trees. That way Marquis Ying would not find his trail and would require a great deal of time to search for him. Then his advantage would become much more obvious. The most important part of this chase would be this beginning part. He was rushing forward as quickly as possible. Once Marquis Ying entered the forest though, he would have to become completely silent and not move at all in the beginning. Otherwise, Marquis Ying would manage to find his position through sound. Long Chen's only advantage over him was that he was a pill cultivator. His soul was exceptionally strong and able to sense his opponent from a large distance. He wouldn't be able to get a perfect view of him from this distance, but he would still be able to sense Marquis Ying's relative position. Once Long Chen had fled over five miles, he suddenly stopped and even suppressed his own breathing not moving at all. That was because he had sensed that Marquis Ying had just entered the forest. Long Chen also closed his eyes and let himself enter an empty spirit state, making it so that he seemed like just another rock in the forest, completely isolating his aura. Having entered this state, he could see Marquis Ying who had just entered the forest. As he had expected, he immediately paused and listened closely for Long Chen. Marquis Ying waited for over the time it took for an incense stick to burn but was unable to hear any breathing. Having just entered the forest, everything was completely silent, silent to a frightening degree. But after a quarter hour had passed, the birds and insects began to play their own music, causing the forest to become bustling with noise. Those bird calls caused Marquis Ying's expression to become increasingly ugly. He hadn't expected Long Chen to be so crafty. He actually knew to use such a method to hide his trail. Long Chen smiled. It seemed his chances of fleeing successfully had increased again. Although the two of them were only separated by around five miles, while hidden deep in this forest, such a distance was already extremely safe. And with the passing of time, he would only become even more at ease. Two hours. Four hours. Six hours later, Marquis Ying finally gave up and began to search for his trail by eye. Following Marquis Ying's search, the entire forest began to once more turn quiet. Long Chen also finally opened his closed eyes. He, Marquis Ying, even if I can't beat you, I still have to properly play with you. Chapter 78 Long Chen's Gift Translator
born to be seeing Marquis Ying begin to move. Long Chen didn't wait around stupidly. He began to slowly sneak deeper into the forest. Long Chen didn't flee at a fast speed, as he needed to be extremely careful. He did his best not to leave any signs of his trail. He also couldn't make any noise. Otherwise, Marquis Ying would definitely notice, and all his efforts would have been wasted. So, Long Chen's fleeing speed was not that much different from Marquis Ying's searching speed. Furthermore, Long Chen couldn't flee in just one direction. If Marquis Ying decided to just rush straight forward upon seeing such a trail, he would be screwed. After all, this wasn't an ordinary game of hide and seek. Losing meant death. This was the first time Long Chen had ever felt so nervous. It was as if the Grim Reaper's sickle was constantly pressed right against his throat. Just the slightest carelessness could lead to his head tumbling into the ground. I found you, Long Chen. Prepare to die. Marquis Ying suddenly shouted out and rushed forward. Long Chen was extremely startled, but he then coldly smiled. His current position was around two miles away from Marquis Ying. That wasn't because Marquis Ying was moving faster than Long Chen, but because Long Chen needed to travel in a zigzag. So in a sense, the distance between them was still over five miles. Marquis Ying was obviously lying. Suddenly jumping like that, an ordinary youth might be scared and start fleeing as fast as he could. That was the real trap. But Long Chen just quietly hid under a huge tree, appreciating the play that this peak phoenix cry expert was putting on for him. Although, he didn't dare watch with his eyes. Ever since the Huaian Pavilion's auction when Marquis Ying had sensed him looking at him even through a wall, Long Chen had learned just how frighteningly perceptive the senses of experts were. Marquis Ying tried his bluff several more times without the slightest bit of success. In the end, he had no choice but to return to his original location and continue searching for traces of Long Chen's trail. After all, no matter how careful Long Chen was, he was unable to fly. The ground, the grass, the rocks, and the trees would all leave behind some sort of trail. But due to how smart Long Chen had acted, his tracks were difficult to find and required him to search for a long time. That greatly reduced Marquis Ying's speed and was also mentally taxing. Long Chen was actually conserving much more energy than Marquis Ying, causing Marquis Ying to become increasingly infuriated. Long Chen, just wait for when I catch you. I'll skin you and pull out each and every single strand of your muscles while you still live before turning your bones to ashes. Marquis Ying ground his teeth. He knew Long Chen was somewhere in the area and could hear him. He could even sense that Long Chen was hiding in a corner and laughing secretly at him. That made him even more infuriated. A grand tendon transformation expert like him, one of the three apex experts of Phoenix Cry, was actually unable to kill a small key condensation brat. If that information got out, then he would immediately become the entire empire's laughing stock. He had a stomach full of anger without anywhere to release it, but he had to maintain his calm. Otherwise, with the slightest negligence, Long Chen might really be able to flee from him. He could only continue to search and follow his trail while also keeping an ear on the surrounding silence. Long Chen sneered. You want to skin me? Such a dream isn't as easy to achieve as you think. Seeing Marquis Ying begin slowly searching, Long Chen continued going deeper into the forest. That was the best option. It was true that it might be possible for him to detour around Marquis Ying and stealthily return to the valley and then the capital. And such an option was definitely tempting to him. But Long Chen had decided to give up on that thought for now. From his understanding of Marquis Ying, he knew that he would have set up many traps before coming here. If he rashly went out the forest, that might just be walking right into his trap. Moreover, his internal injuries were extremely severe. His right hand's meridians had been completely destroyed. He had perhaps just a tenth of his regular fighting ability. Just a few random blood condensation subordinates possessed a fatal danger to him. So he had no choice but to suppress his desire to return to the capital. He continued deeper into the forest, carefully traveling in a zigzag manner so that he could easily misguide Marquis Ying, forcing him to travel even slower. After another four hours, the sky darkened. The entire forest became much gloomier and frightening. Occasionally, the howls of ferocious beasts rang out. Long Chen's expression sunk. If his luck was bad and he ended up being noticed by one of those beasts, although he wouldn't be killed by the beast, he would likely end up attracting Marquis Ying over. Now that night had already arrived, many beasts had begun to come out of their lairs. Those beasts didn't know how difficult Long Chen would be to deal with. If they happened to consider him as food to prey on, that would be troublesome. Long Chen was hiding behind a stone rampart. Suddenly, he heard some light sounds coming over. 
and sweeping his divine sense over, he felt a huge headache. At this time, it was so dark that he couldn't even see his own fingers even if he held his hand right over his eyes. However, his spiritual strength could substitute for his eyes to see everything within dozens of meters of him extremely clearly. In front of him was a wolf around a meter tall. That one meter wolf was essentially a cub. Long Chen cursed his bad luck. Although this was just a wild beast and not a magical beast, if that cub ended up attacking him, even if he did manage to kill it in one blow, it would still cause a bit of noise. In this silent forest, such a noise was something that Mark was Ying, with his tendon transformation cultivation base, could not possibly miss, especially not while he was quietly searching for his trail. Long Chen slowly took out a dagger from his ring. If that hungry wolf did end up coming at him, he had to kill it in one shot but he had absolutely no confidence in being able to kill it without making the slightest noise. If it ended up letting out a miserable howl as it died, then it would be over for him. Man and wolf looked right at each other. Long Chen felt his sweat begin to drip. This face-to-face -face examination continued for several breaths when the wolf's nose suddenly sniffed slightly. It actually withdrew and disappeared into the night. Long Chen was extremely puzzled when he suddenly remembered Little Snow, having been in contact with that little fellow for so long. Had some of his magical beast smell rubbed off on him and scared away the wolf? Wait. Crap. Little Snow is still in the valley. He clapped himself in the forehead. He had actually forgotten about Little Snow in his panic. Before going to kill Xia Changfang, he had hidden Little Snow inside a cave. But the situation had changed greatly from what he had imagined. Marquis Ying's appearance had forced Long Chen and Wild to fight against him with all they had. Yet in the end, they were unable to defeat Chiring him. Long Chen had fled into the forest to draw Marquis Ying away. Now that he suddenly thought of Little Snow, Long Chen prayed that Wild would for once be smart and remember to bring Little Snow away. The current Little Snow had eaten quite a bit of meat after being with Long Chen. He had already grown from being the size of a palm to being over a foot long, but that was still too small for him to survive on his own. Thinking of that adorable fellow, Long Chen actually had an urge to go back to the valley, but that was not a viable option. He was almost certain that Marquis Ying had set up other killers waiting for him around there. Long Chen's hatred of Marquis Ying grew even greater now. However, he was also helpless. Seeing that wolf retreat, Long Chen hastily moved a couple of rocks over to completely hide himself. He would conceal his body and aura, which would allow him to avoid most of the beasts. Suddenly, he heard distant roars. Long Chen smiled. He, it seemed Marquis Ying truly was popular. Long Chen didn't dare kill that wolf because he was afraid of drawing over Marquis Ying. Moreover, the death of such a beast would release a strong scent of blood that would attract countless predators. Those predators were the masters of this area. They were all able to easily smell blood within five miles. Not long after the first roar, other beasts had also come. Long Chen could even hear the sound of a blade slashing through the air. He, excellent. You just stay busy for now. I'll recover for a bit. Having hidden himself behind a stone rampart, he was extremely difficult to find. Now with Marquis Ying having to fend off all the vicious beasts that were gathering around him, he felt even safer. He consumed two medicinal pills. One was to heal his inner wounds, while the other was to heal his meridians. As a pill cultivator, Long Chen naturally had prepared countless medicinal pills for himself. Now they finally had some use. Moreover, the medicinal pills, which he had reserved for his own use, were extremely extravagant. They were all high-grade medicinal pills. Ever since obtaining the Beast Flame at the Phoenix Cry Lantern Festival, his flame strength had increased so much that Long Chen had completely replaced all of his middle-grade medicinal pills. Now that he had consumed those two medicinal pills, he no longer had to be as worried about his inner wounds. As long as he had enough time, they would slowly recover. But the injury to his hand's meridians was somewhat troublesome. Meridians spread throughout the entire body reaching every inch of his body. It was precisely because of those canal-like meridians that spiritual ki could be sent anywhere in the body to release powerful strength. If an ordinary person's meridians were destroyed, that person would essentially become a cripple. But Long Chen had his pill God's memories. So although this matter was a bit troublesome, it wasn't a huge obstacle. It just required some time to fix. Long Chen focused his medicinal pill's energy onto the end point of his wrist where the meridians had been damaged. Using spiritual strength and medicinal energy, he let the meridians regenerate. Letting meridians regenerate was an incredibly difficult process. In principle it was simple. It was just allowing broken canals to once more grow along their old routes. 
but the difficulty was actually incredibly great. In the entire Phoenix Cry Empire, even including Grandmaster Yan Qi, there was no one other than Long Chen who could do so. Grandmaster Yan Qi could perhaps recover the Fingers Meridians because those were main meridians that many people remembered. But as for those extremely thin meridians that were no wider than a hair, those were something he was definitely incapable of healing. And even if he did manage to mold those meridians out with his experience, they would be completely different from the old ones. Long Chen's method was not the same. He was letting the meridians once more grow out extremely naturally, letting them follow their own paths that they remembered. Such a process was exceptionally slow. But to Long Chen, each millimeter they grew was another increase in his chances of survival. Long Chen focused his entire attention on recovering from his wounds. The entire night passed as he worked and he only opened his eyes when it was daytime once more. Quietly opening the stone shelter he had built, he looked over in the direction where all those beast roars had come from and his stomach suddenly grumbled. Long Chen's eyes brightened and he suddenly smiled mischievously. Mark Wis Ying, this master is going to prepare a little gift for you. Chapter 79 Sending a Lump Translator Born to be deep within the dense forest, Mark Wis Ying was looking down at Long Chen's tracks. His expression was so dark that it was frightening. That was because he had realized Long Chen was extremely crafty. Sometimes he would purposely leave footprints to mislead him. He would follow those footprints and find that any trace of Long Chen completely disappeared after a while. With his tracks completely disappearing, it meant that Long Chen must have backtracked into a previous location and once more fled in a different direction. These footprints were purposely a bit more clear to intentionally let Marquis Ying see them. Now he would have to go back and spend even more time searching for where Long Chen had split off into a different direction. Marquis Ying was completely infuriated. Long Chen was too cunning. Sometimes, the footprints he left behind intentionally would actually be the direction he went. So Marquis Ying couldn't even rule that out. In order to tell his true direction, Marquis Ying had no choice but to patiently follow along slowly. He could sense Long Chen wasn't that far, but he was unable to find him. He was so angry that his lungs felt like they were about to explode. A whole day had already passed since they had entered the forest. Marquis Ying was starting to get impatient. However, he also had no way around this. He could only continue searching for his tracks. In this manner, the two of them continued playing hide and seek in the endless forest. Although Long Chen had a slight advantage at this time, he didn't dare to be the slightest bit overconfident. If Long Chen wanted to, he would actually able to quickly break away from Marquis Ying's pursuit. However, he refused to do that. He only continued to keep Marquis Ying at a distance of 5 miles. That was the perfect distance from which a tendon transformation expert could sense an enemy in the vicinity, but would be unable to pinpoint that enemy's location. This was done intentionally by Long Chen. After sending Long Chen to kill Xia Changfang, the fourth prince had sent Marquis Ying to kill him. This meant the fourth prince was no longer worried about his father. In other words, the entire Long household was in danger. He had to continue this in order to stall Marquis Ying. One reason for this stalling was that as long as Wilde was doing what he had told him, he would quickly return to the capital. Wilde would bring his household's people to the Alchemist Guild. With his relationship to Grandmaster Yan Qi, he would definitely not ignore them. At that time, even the fourth prince would have to reconsider whether he should make any moves against them. The other reason was that if Marquis Ying continued not to return to the capital, the fourth prince who hadn't received a report of his death would definitely not attack the Long household. That was why Long Chen continued to risk his life to hold Marquis Ying up. It was also why he had no other options. He had to do this. He carefully continued advancing. Long Chen suddenly saw a huge tree with a fist-sized beetle on it. Seeing that beetle, Long Chen's eyes brightened. He recognized that beetle as the horned bull beetle. That was because it had a horn on its nose that was just like a bull's horn. This was a very mildly tempered beetle. Its movements were especially slow. But it shouldn't be underestimated for being small. Its strength was actually shocking. Just such a small beetle was capable of moving 10 to 20 pounds. He smiled. He, little guy, help me out a bit. Ignoring its outrage, Long Chen picked up the little beetle and placed it into his robes. Once more advancing another mile. He found a good location and stopped. He took out a thin thread from his spatial ring. That was black silk. And despite its thinness, it was extremely sturdy. Just one thread of it could withstand half a ton of force. Most adventurers would also keep a bit of it on hand. Whether it was to use as a rope or to make a snare, it was extremely convenient. 
The most popular thing about it was that it was made from black silkworms that were raised by humans, so it could be bought cheaply. Long Chen looked around and nodded in approval. The black silk's color was not easy to notice against the background. He found a short bush around the size of an egg and gently pushed on it, feeling a good elasticity. He lightly twined the black silk around the bush. By tying it back with the black silk, the bush was just like an arm ready to pitch. Once it lost the force of the black silk, it would immediately shoot forward. Long Chen did all of this extremely carefully. The slightest mistake might make a large enough noise to attract Marquis Ying. But thinking about the result of this trap if it worked, this little danger was definitely worth it. He finished setting up his slingshot. Looking around the vicinity, he saw both sides were covered by thorny thistles and there was only one straight path through this area. While people were rushing, they would naturally choose the easiest path. So this was the ideal spot to place the trigger. Putting up several obstacles around his slingshot to protect it, he confirmed the distance. No matter how Marquis Ying arrived, he would definitely step upon a certain route. He took out the horn beetle and bound one of its legs with the black silk. Placing it on top of a large tree, the beetle began to slowly crawl, but it wasn't randomly crawling around. It was crawling up to a spot 10 meters up on the tree. That was because Long Chen had placed a petal from a butterfly orchid there. That was a kind of medicinal ingredient. That petal contained a very rich sweetness. It was also the favorite food of the horned bull beetle. Although that petal was half withered, with the beetle's amazing sense of smell, it immediately noticed it and began to crawl over to it with all its might. Its speed was extremely slow though. It only managed to reach there after the time it took for an incense stick to burn. But just as it was preparing to eat its favorite food, Long Chen picked up the pitiful fellow and pulled it away. Long Chen made some calculations and tied a knot over the beetle, keeping it in place. That knot had a small loop in it. If that loop was touched, then the knot would immediately loosen, releasing it. After carefully setting up all these preparations, he placed a small stone on the other side of the black silk. He confirmed everything was set. Once the beetle crawled up to the butterfly orchid's petal, it would activate and release the knot, causing the stone to fall to the ground. Long Chen once more looked over his trap from start to end. A strange smile appeared on his face. He found a large leaf and then sneakily hid behind a large tree. He watched for a moment as the beetle continued according to its original route, crawling towards the petal. But due to it now pulling along a stone, its speed had slowed down a bit. Long Chen nodded and quietly retreated. Now there was only one tiny crucial item remaining. As for whether the trap would succeed, that would depend on Marquis Ying. He stealthily disappeared deeper into the forest. An hour later, Marquis Ying, who was searching for any of Long Chen's tracks, suddenly heard a strange sound, the sound of a stone rolling. That sound was extremely quiet, but within the keen listening ears of Marquis Ying, it was practically a thunderclap. Marquis Ying didn't even think about it before rushing over. He was just like a wild gale, and three or four miles was instantly traversed. That sound had definitely not been natural. He knew it was the sound of someone accidentally tripping on a stone. Within this silent forest, other than him, the only one who would make such a noise was Long Chen. Thinking of Long Chen, flames of fury rose inside him. Last night, he hadn't gotten the slightest bit of sleep and hadn't even had time to rest his wounds. Those damn beasts had become enraged and continuously attacked him. Although they were unable to pose any danger to him, they had troubled his internal injury. It was impossible for a medicinal pill alone to completely heal his injury. He had to combine it with spiritual key in order to recover. But he hadn't had any time or opportunity to do so. He was forced into being unable to maintain his peak combat ability, causing him to feel a great sense of unease. So he urgently needed to kill Long Chen and return to the capital to recover. In just a couple of breaths time, Marquis Ying arrived at where the sound had come from, but there was no sign of Long Chen anywhere. Under a tree was the rock that had made the noise, and it seemed the rock had writings on it. Marquis Ying looked over the surroundings and his expression became ugly when he saw no sign of Long Chen. He knew that he had most likely been played. He slowly walked over to that rock, wanting to know what Long Chen had wanted to show him. He had just walked a couple of steps when he suddenly stepped on a string that activated the short bush not far from him. A ball of something wrapped in a green leaf shot towards him. Marquis Ying coldly laughed and raised his sword, slicing that ball in half. HMPH, you little insect he hadn't expected that the moment his sword touched that ball, the ball exploded, filling the air with juice. Due to that happening so fast and being so close, Marquis Ying was unable to get away in time and was completely drenched by that juice. 
An incomparably disgusting smell filled the air. Some of it had also gotten into his mouth. So now his mouth was also full of that disgusting stench. Marquis Ying hastily retreated, his first thought being that it was poison. But although that thing had been incomparably disgusting, it didn't have traces of poison in it. His spiritual key was circulating completely normally. Now that he had time, he noticed that the rock on the ground had flipped over to reveal the following words. Just a small gift which is unworthy of you. Originally, I wanted to send you a large lump. But recently my stomach hasn't been feeling well. Please forgive my helplessness. Looking at the words, Marquis Ying's face suddenly turned completely white. Looking at the sticky residue left on his clothes, his stomach began to heave and he vomited. Long Chen, Marquis Ying's incredibly angry roar practically blew apart the clouds above him. It caused the entire forest to shake, and countless birds and beasts were frightened into flight. Long Chen was on a distant tree watching those birds. He smiled heartily. He had finally released some of his anger at being chased like this. Ever since that day, Marquis Ying's face became even darker and Long Chen became even more careful, not daring to set up such a trap again. If he ended up making a slight mistake when setting it up, he would definitely be doomed. That small trap had been to relieve his anger and to increase his self-confidence. Since he had managed to do that, it wouldn't be smart to set something like that up again. Only by being careful could he survive. He didn't want his hard-worked advantage to be reversed. One fled while one chased. Eight days quickly passed by. Over that time, Long Chen fled during the day and recuperated during the night after using all kinds of different techniques to hide from the wild beasts. Due to the assistance of his medicinal pills, Long Chen's recovery was extremely quick. His right hand's meridians had almost completely recovered. His inner injuries had also nearly healed. Ever since the first night where he had drawn over many beasts, Marquis Ying had become smarter and also rested during the night. He would jump up into a high tree, using the time to rest and heal his wounds. His efficiency was also very fast. This continued up until the ninth day. Long Chen was crossing a small stream when he sensed a strange movement above his head. Looking up, his expression greatly changed. Crap, I'm screwed. Chapter 80 Final Showdown Translator Born to be on the ninth day, Long Chen's expression suddenly changed. There was simply a monkey at the top of a large tree. It wasn't very large, but its throat was extremely thick. It was looking at Long Chen guardedly. Long Chen immediately didn't even dare to move a muscle. He couldn't help but feel endless regret. Having played around with Marquis Ying with that gift before, he had actually grown too careless. That monkey was just an ordinary beast. It didn't have any attacking strength. But it was precisely this monkey which caused Long Chen to enter a huge crisis. That monkey was a beast that liked to live in large groups. This part of the forest was obviously their territory, and that monkey should be a sentry. As soon as they sensed intruders or danger, they would immediately let out a loud howl to alert their comrades. Long Chen hadn't been paying enough attention to his surroundings and ended up running into their territory. He immediately realized he had made an inexcusable mistake. He began to slowly retreat, showing that he was leaving immediately. But it was already too late. That monkey let out a loud howl from atop that tree, its voice immediately spreading out dozens of miles. Long Chen's expression sunk. If he had been in range, he definitely would have immediately crushed that monkey in anger. The entire forest began to echo with more alarmed calls. Long Chen's pupils suddenly shrunk. From the distance, a figure was rushing over straight towards Long Chen. He could now see Marquis Ying whose eyes were brimming with killing intent. Now that Marquis Ying had already found him, running would be useless. Long Chen directly gave up any thoughts of escaping. Since he was already found, other methods were now useless. Now the only option was to risk his life. Long Chen, if I don't turn your bones to ashes then I won't be surnamed Ying. Marquis Ying arrived in just the blink of an eye. The current Marquis Ying's eyes were practically about to spit out flames. Each one of the past eight days had felt like a year. In particular, that gift, which Long Chen had sent him had caused the extremely immaculate Marquis Ying to almost want to kill himself. Although he hadn't eaten a thing in the last eight days, he was still constantly vomiting. It seemed as if he wanted to even vomit out all of his stomach contents. In fact, at this time, Marquis Ying's hatred of Long Chen had already surpassed his hatred for Long Shiang Xiao. Seeing Long Chen standing right in front of him now, his body was incessantly quivering. As for the reason for that, perhaps only Marquis Ying knew it. Whether or not your surnamed Ying has nothing to do with me. I'm not your dad. Long Chen shook his head. The broadsword once more reappeared in his hands. 
Words had no meaning anymore. Having been on edge constantly over the past few days, his heart had actually calmed down now that he was facing Marquis Ying. He sensed that his current state had already reached his previous peak, so there was nothing to fear. It even seemed as if his cultivation realm had increased a level. That was an extremely mysterious feeling. He couldn't clearly explain it. But under Marquis Ying's constant pursuit, the scent of death had never been far. He felt as if he had transformed after that experience. Ha 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 ha. Are you provoking me now in hopes of me giving you a quick death? Stop dreaming. I'll make it so you live a life worse than death. A life that will make you regret ever being born in this world. Marquis Ying's face was extremely sinister. I don't need to provoke you. How was the taste of the gift I sent you last time? Long Chen asked lightly. Hearing the word gift, Marquis Ying's face immediately whitened and his stomach once more began to heave. I'll kill you. Marquis Ying angrily shouted, and his sword sliced through the air towards Long Chen. Long Chen had long since been prepared. He also sent his sword slashing forward. Bang. Long Chen was sent back a dozen of steps before being able to stabilize himself. His blood and ki were in an upheaval inside. Looking at Marquis Ying, he saw that he had only taken three steps back. He sighed. Tendon transformation experts truly were a huge level above. His current strength had recovered to over 90%, but he was still not an equal match for Marquis Ying. Even in terms of his brute strength, he was completely outmatched by Marquis Ying. That was a clear difference. That was also why amongst the countless cultivators in Phoenix Cry, Marquis Ying was at the absolute apex. On the other side, Marquis Ying's eyes narrowed when he saw that Long Chen was actually able to block his blow. Alchemists truly did have ample preparations. When Long Chen had fled back then, he had already been halfway dead, but now he had mostly recovered. It was obvious Long Chen had consumed quite a few medicinal pills. But as for Marquis Ying, he wasn't an alchemist and his cultivation base was too high for most medicinal pills to work on him. So effective medicinal pills were extremely rare treasures for him. This caused intense envy inside of him. If he was also an alchemist or had such medicinal pills, how would it be possible for him to have still yet to recover to 70% even after all these days? Thinking of that, Marquis Ying felt that the heavens truly were unfair. Within the same generation as him was Long Shiang Xiao who had completely suppressed him, making it difficult for him to stand out. And then Long Shiang Xiao had an amazing son who had become a pill adept at a young age and was also a shockingly talented genius in terms of the martial path. Compared to Long Shiang Xiao, he was an absolute failure. His eyes reddened and green veins exploded out on his body, coldly shouting and raising his sword. Sword Qi filled the air and shook the heavens. Long Chen took a deep breath. The current Marquis Ying was acting like a madman. Now that he was using his full strength to attack, Long Chen would be unable to block him. Touching his ring, he took out two medicinal pills. He threw one of them into his mouth and swallowed it. The other one was rubbed along his broadsword using his spiritual strength. Marquis Ying had been able to see him swallow a medicinal pill, and he assumed that Long Chen was using it to heal injuries. But the second medicinal pill had been hidden and silently spread across the broadsword's back. It had been impossible for Marquis Ying to see. Marquis Ying's sword was already crashing down upon him. Long Chen roared and also slashed out. In terms of sword techniques, Marquis Ying could play around with Long Chen as much as he wanted to. But the broadsword in Long Chen's hands was so long that it was a perfect counter to such a thing. So, Marquis Ying's exquisite techniques were completely useless. Boom. The two swords collided and there was a huge explosion. A faint red gas immediately spread out and enveloped an area of 30 meters. The two of them were both swallowed by it. A-H-H-H. That red gas invaded Marquis Ying's body and he immediately let out a miserable scream. His exposed skin felt as if hot iron was branding it and the intense pain was simply unbearable. Not only that, but the red gas seemed to come alive and was doing its best to force its way into his body through his skin. Even though he had reacted at the very first moment and stopped breathing it in, it was absolutely useless. And that red gas also possessed an extremely terrifying corrosive nature. Blisters were quickly appearing on his skin. His flesh was rotting at a speed he could see with his naked eye. You used poison. Asked the shocked Marquis Ying angrily. What do you think? Long Chen coldly laughed. But he also wasn't that well off. The poison pill refined from the hard rot grass was extremely powerful. Even he himself was unable to block it. Although he had taken an antitoxin pill, he was unable to completely defend against that poisonous gas. His body was also harmed and turned red as if he was being boiled. But he was still better off than Marquis Ying. 
That antitoxin pill allowed him to not have to worry about the poisonous gas corroding his heart. That was the most terrifying aspect of the poison pill refined from hard rot grass. That poison pill was his strongest life-saving measure. Marquis Ying truly was too powerful, so he had had no choice but to use it. Marquis Ying angrily roared and tried to send a full force attack at Long Chen, but his expression greatly changed. Just as he began to circulate his spiritual key, the poisonous gas that had just entered through his skin suddenly spread throughout his body quickly and then went straight for his heart. This completely terrified Marquis Ying. If such a powerful poison invaded his heart, even he, a tendon transformation expert, would not be able to live for more than a few moments. He hastily took out a medicinal pill from his ring and swallowed it. When Long Chen saw that pill, his expression changed. He hadn't expected Marquis Ying to possess such a medicinal pill. Just from its luster and the fragrance being emitted from it, Long Chen could identify that pill to be a snow toad Yeo Wen. 1. The snow toad was an extremely rare magical beast. It didn't have a crystal core like other magical beasts. All its essence was focused on its needon. 2. The snow toad was also a kind of poisonous beast. A matured snow toad was a second-rank magical beast. The poisonous mist it spat out could immediately cover an area of hundreds of meters. That poisonous mist was able to poison other magical beasts to death and cause all vegetation to wither away. It was extremely frightening. But it was precisely because its poisonous gas was so powerful that even it was unable to endure it. Thus, its needon was used to help it survive even its own poison. Snow toads were an extremely rare kind of magical beast from which both poison and antitoxins could be extracted. The snow toad Yeowen that could be refined from the snow toad's need and could cure hundreds of poisons. It was an extremely precious medicinal pill, which was why it was extremely surprising that Marquis Ying possessed it. Although it was said to resolve hundreds of poisons, it was mostly just a partial cure. But just resolving part of the poison was enough to reverse a person's fate. Long Chen. You actually forced me to use a precious pill that I've hidden away for half of my life. Give me your life as the price. Marquis Ying's face was extremely twisted now. That pill was something he had obtained as a youth and had continuously hidden. But now because of a key condensation weakling like Long Chen, he was forced to use it. His heart was practically dripping blood. Long Chen was greatly alarmed to see that the snow toad Yeo Wen was actually able to temporarily suppress the poisonous gases attack on his heart. Marquis Ying charged at him, and in response, all twelve of his cyclones began to wildly spin, releasing his full strength. His sword danced in the air, meeting Marquis Ying's blows head on. Boom, boom, boom. Consecutive exchanges caused explosive key waves that flattened the huge trees around them, the power of just the aftershocks being absolutely shocking. Long Chen felt his arm turn numb under Marquis Ying's full force attacks. Blood stained the corner of his mouth and his internal organs were starting to be affected. But at this time, Long Chen still ground his teeth and continued to endure. He knew that the snow toad Yeo Wen would not be able to suppress his poison pill forever. Bang! Long Chen was sent flying, vomiting blood. But Marquis Ying didn't have the slightest happiness on his face. Instead, he was filled with horror. He, have you finally noticed? Did you really think the poison pill refined by me, Long Chen, was so easy to resolve? Long Chen wiped off the blood on his mouth and coldly laughed. The moment he had been waiting for had finally arrived. The snow toad Yeo Wen could resolve hundreds of poisons and its effectiveness was definitely shockingly high. But that was mostly for beast poisons. Long Chen's poison pill had been mostly refined from the hard rot grass. This caused the effectiveness of the snow toad Yeo Wen to sharply drop. A murderous aura overflowed from Marquis Ying. Taking a deep breath, he raised his sword and a terrifying aura filled the sword killing intent engulfed the forest. Even so, I'll still kill you. His sword shot through the air. The terrifying power behind it cut through the space and released a sharp splitting sound. With endless killing intent, it slashed towards Long Chen. Void breaking slash. 